All right, good morning, everyone. I'd like to call to order the Public Improvement Commission hearing of August 20th, 2020. Um, before getting to the hearing minutes to uh, just quick updates, uh, throughout the course of this public health um, pandemic, we've been operating on a monthly cycle um, online, Public Improvement Commission. Uh, we are gonna be moving back to a bi-weekly schedule, still online, still um, hosting our PIC meetings digitally as we are doing today. Um, but having a cadence of a PIC meeting essentially every two weeks, which will put our next PIC meeting uh, on September 3rd. Uh, the second uh, just quick note is that uh, I will be uh, for a portion of this meeting uh, stepping out and apologizing of the city's uh, engineer uh, will be chairing the PIC during that portion of the, uh, of the hearing. Uh, and with that, uh, we'll move on to the hearing minutes. Uh, just to remind folks that if they are not presenting if, um, uh, or providing testimony, if they can mute their phones uh, or uh, mute their screens uh, during uh, during that portion, that'd be great. Our first item is the hearing minutes. At the request of the Public Improvement Commission staff, the acceptance of the hearing minutes of the PIC hearing held on July 23rd, 2020. Any questions or comments on that? All right, uh, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion on this item. I make a motion to approve the minutes from the July meeting. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Moving on to our first item of the utility poll hearing on a joint petition by Verizon New England Inc. and Eversource Energy for a poll relocation within Norwell Street, a public way in Dorchester to relocate one existing utility pole to be located on its westly side at addresses, address numbers 233-235 South Park Street. Do you have somebody from Verizon New England or from Eversource to present? Todd or Abby, do you know if anyone is here for uh, that item? Um, I believe Karen Johnson from Eversource was supposed to be uh, signing on. I, I, oh, she is here. Can you unmute yourself, Karen? Karen, you'll need to unmute yourself uh, to to uh, testify. Uh, Karen, let us know if uh, you'd like us to come back to the utility poll hearing after the uh, uh, public hearing continued items. Go ahead and move on, Chief. Um, okay. okay. Uh, moving on to uh, public hearing continued. Our first item is on a petition by Mark Kenmore LLC for the widening, relocation, and extension of the existing right of way lines of Commonwealth Avenue, a public way in Boston proper, generally at Beacon Street slash Kenmore Square, located west of Brookline Avenue. This was new business on April 23rd, 2020, had its first public hearing on May 21st, 2020. And public hearing continued uh, sessions on June 18th, 2020 and July 23rd, 2020. This is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Winding and Relocation Plan Commonwealth Avenue Fenway One Sheet dated March 2020. Uh, good morning, Chairman Osgood, members of the commission. I, my camera seems to be disagreeing with me right, right now, but. Um, Steve Moderano with Bowler uh, in, on behalf of uh, Mark Kemmore LLC. Uh, we've, we've had a lot of, been doing a lot of legwork in the background, a lot of conversations with uh, comments that we've received from the public and various agencies. Uh, unfortunately, we're still uh, need a little more time. Uh, and I, I think the two weeks would be appropriate um, to just button up a few items uh before we can uh move forward so uh, requesting a continuance uh on, on this project if the connection can choose itself uh thanks steve any uh, questions or comments from the commission todd or abby we're all set okay all right members of the public i 
C9. Okay, I'll entertain a motion oh, to continue with the item until the September 3rd. Oh, Chief, I'm sorry. sorry about that. Uh, it, uh, it said, do you have a comment? Uh, yes, Ms. Zimmerman, um, go ahead and unmute yourself. For some reason, uh, it looks like you're back on mute. If you, Ms. Zimmerman, if you hold down control and hit the letter D on your keyboard, that should unmute yourself. Hmm. Uh, it seems like I, I'm. Uh, I'm so. I'm sorry for the uh, technical challenges. Um, uh, this item is is being continued, so we won't be taking a vote uh, uh, to uh, approve or reject uh, this particular uh, submission today. Um, okay. I, I, uh, but we will gladly either take some comments in writing before the, the September 3rd, or we'll see you on September 3rd. Okay. Right, thank you. Um, uh, all right. Any other members of the public, Todd, that you see? Uh, I don't see any. I don't see any. Um, if any members of the public wish to add testimony to this or any other uh, actions, we ask that you please. Uh, note by do by uh, dropping a note in the comment section, uh, the speech bubble in the top right section of your screen. Chief, at this time I see no other uh, members of the public wishing to speak to this one. Uh, <laughs> Kara, I think we might have lost the chief. Um, if you don't mind. Sorry. Oh, are you there? There he is. Sorry about that. Yep, uh, no problem. Um, all right, I will uh, entertain a motion on this item uh, to uh, continue it until for two weeks of September 3rd uh, PIC meeting. I make public a hearing continued agenda item one. I make a motion to continue this matter for two weeks until uh, September 3rd. Second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So moved. Moving on to our second public hearing item continued on petition by Mark Kenmore LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper consisting of curb realignment, roadway and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps and driveway curb cuts. Locations are Commonwealth Avenue at address number 560-574, generally at Beacon Street, Kenmore Square, uh, and Beacon Street, generally at Commonwealth Avenue slash Kenmore Square. This was new business on April 23rd, 2020. Uh, had its first public hearing on May 21st, 2020. Had its public hearing continued on uh, June 18th, 2020 and July 23rd, 2020. This is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan, Commonwealth Avenue and Beacon Street, Fenway, one sheet dated March 2020. Uh, good morning, members of the commission. Steve Monterano from Bowler, again, uh, representing uh, Mark Kimmore, LLC. Uh, same as the last item, we, we need a couple more weeks to button up some details and would like to request a continuation of this matter. And Steve, we'll continue to simulate for two weeks. Uh, yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Any questions or comments by members of the commission? Todd or Abby? We're all set. Okay. Uh, members of the public? I see none. Okay. Uh, and and again for uh, Ms. Zimmerman or, or others, uh, if uh, you have an interest in submitting sort of written testimony, uh, you certainly can to the PIC. This again, we'll, we're we're not voting uh, other than to sort of continue this uh, item until the September third meeting, and so you'll have an opportunity at that time to offer testimony as well. 
Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, with that, I'll entertain a, a motion on this item to continue it until September 3rd. For public hearing, continued agenda item two. I make a motion to continue this matter for two weeks to September 3rd. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Aye. Thank you. Uh, moving briefly back to the utility poll hearing, uh, if, if Karen Johnson, you're available, um, let's see if we can pick that, uh, that item up that we had skipped previously. Uh, again, this is a uh, this is a utility poll hearing on a joint petition by Verizon New England Inc. and Eversource Energy for a poll relocation within Norwell Street, a public way in Dorchester, to relocate one existing utility pole to be located on its westly side at address numbers 233-235 South Park Street. Karen, are you able to present on this? She just rejoined the meeting, so. Yep. All right, we will we will move on while um, we're working on that. I don't know if Todd or Avi, you can connect with Karen to see if there's something which we can do to um, see if there's some technical difficulties we need to resolve. Um, moving on to our third public hearing item continued on a joint petition by the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority and the City of Boston Transportation Department for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Roxbury, consisting of curb realignment, roadway and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, street lighting infrastructure, traffic signal infrastructure, traffic control infrastructure, storm drain infrastructure, raised crosswalks, pedestrian barriers, uh, driveway curb cuts and median islands. The locations are Columbus Avenue between Walnut Avenue and Center Street slash Ritchie Street, Walnut Avenue generally at Columbus Avenue, Dixwell Street south of Columbus Avenue, Weld Avenue southwest of Columbus Avenue, Washington Street generally at Columbus Avenue, West Walnut Park, generally Columbus Avenue, Bray Street, east of Columbus Avenue, Bancroft Street, west of Columbus Avenue, Bragdon Street, generally at Columbus Avenue, Dimmick Street, generally at Columbus Avenue, Academy Road, east of Columbus Avenue, Amory Street, west of Columbus Avenue, and Ritchie Street, east of Columbus Avenue. This was new business. On June 18th, 2020, had its first public hearing on July 23rd, 2020, and this has shown on a set of plans entitled the City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repairs Plan. Columbus Avenue, Center Street to Walnut Ave, Boston, 11 Sheets in June 18th, 2020. Um, hello, thank you, Chief. Thank you for, for your time. Um, this is William Moose with the City of Boston. Um, I'm joined today by uh, Matthew Moran from uh, the City Transit Team, as well as Eric Shire from the MBTA. And, um, and we're also joined by Howard Stein Hudson, uh, the design consultant on this project. Um, you know, I actually think I'll just briefly share my screen to uh, provide a quick overview. I don't think most of us are strangers to this project, but just as a uh, as a quick refresher and reiterating what uh, you know what the chief just read off visually. You know, we're talking about a corridor that extends basically from Franklin Park at the uh, Columbus Seaver and Walnut Ave intersection, um, all the way up to uh, Center and Ritchie Street at Jackson Square. Um, we're introducing four new center bus stops um, with uh, two bus platforms at each one, so eight new platforms total, um, as well as center running bus lanes, um, reconstructing large number of pedestrian ramps on the corridor, uh, introducing work, um, adding new crosswalk signals. Uh, so that, that's just a very high level overview of the project. Um, I believe that Rick Latini from Howard Stein Hudson has joined us and um, can pull up the PIC plans to walk us through that if we have specific questions um, with respect to that. But I'll, I'll stop presenting now. And well, thanks for that overview. Uh, Rick can walk us through the plans. That would be great. Let me see if I can grab this. Uh, All right, now last time I did this, I was able to present and now I cannot seem to get it to work. Mm. Uh, let's see. Come on, where are you? Oh, I'm going to sh share my entire screen possibly. That will stink. Uh, it is still not working. I'm very sorry about this. Um, 
Okay. Rick, were you hoping to share the, the specific repair plans? Or were we hoping? Yeah, I have, I have the whole setup on my screen. It's just not letting me pick the actual mm -hmm. program with it on, so. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I, can, I can share my screen with the PIC plans. I actually was able to do this last time. I don't know why it's not working this time. Sorry about that. No problem, let me just pull them up. And here I one again. All right, is everybody seeing my screen now? We can. All right, is it a, is the Zoom okay? Yep. Okay. Sure, uh, well, I don't know if you guys want to do questions per sheet. Uh, I want, once again, Rick, the team with Howard Stein, Hudson, I don't know if you want to look at each sheet first and, and it's kind of a similar theme throughout every, every single sheet. So I don't know how you want to do this sheet or just go through all of them. Rick, why don't you walk us through all of them and then we'll, we'll pause your questions come up along, along the way. Okay, well, in this first sheet here is, uh, as William mentioned, again, the project uh, that's, you know, the Franklin Park entries on the top left corner here. Uh, this one here, we're just adding uh, accessible ADA compliance sidewalks across Walnut Ave. And as you can see to the right here, we have the first of the, um, of the center bus stops we were talking about, the um, platforms. I just go to the next sheet because not, but this one's on. So here you can see, you know, the center, center line is the bus priority lane. Uh, you can obviously see the bus platforms to the left there, center line platforms. As you go down this street, we do have um, a, a mid block crossing there where we're doing a, a bump out to, you know, shrink the pedestrian distance across there. Um, and then um, I think that's I think that's it on this sheet for uh, as far as reconstruction. I mean, obviously we have some areas of mill and overlay and full depth in here too, but. Uh, not quite a PIC item, but a public works consideration for sure. Um, I'd go to the next sheet, yep. Um, so um, this is a uh, well dev. I, is this the one near the uh, Housing Authority Tower, William? I'm trying to get my orientation here just so people know where we are. Yes. yes. Okay, so, so yeah, okay. So that's, that's this location, once again, the, the center platforms and the bus priority line, lanes there. We obviously have a crosswalk into the platform, so um, those are obviously new uh, accessible ramps there, and we are fixing the ramps on Wild Ave and Dixwell Street um, too. Next sheet. And this is, uh, you know, this is this is uh, that, you know the Eggleston where the Eggleston Square sign is um, right here. We're just mostly just pavement markings. This particular area. Obviously, we have to move these. Uh, I didn't mention it before, but obviously we have to move some of the uh, center. Median islands for these bus priority lanes, obviously. So, um, and we are um, cutting back on the left hand side. There is a, a long island there that we're cutting back the, the nose of it just to get the whole crosswalk um, across it. Right now, you can see it kind of goes into the uh, crosswalk a little bit. So, uh, just so you know, the plans you're looking at, that's going to shift just like a foot or two. So, I think that's a de minimis change from what you guys are looking at, but it'll show up on the mile as we send you in the end here if we are approved. Uh, next sheet, please. Uh, Rick, while we're on this sheet, uh, oh, sure, yeah. and this may be more of a question for William, as we think about uh, other place-making improvements with it, with Eggleston Square, can you just sort of talk a little bit about how this uh, either advances that or uh, conflicts with it, just sort of how, the, how these projects fit together? Yeah, sure. You know, I, I think right now, um, you know, the, the uh, this project we're doing with the T on Columbus Ave um, is making a lot of changes and improvements to the corridor. But understanding that there was going to be a city-led project to do a, uh, a thorough uh, look at this particular intersection with all of its complexities and eccentricities, and uh, you know, come up with a more permanent uh, sort of public improvement and uh, safety fix for this corridor. You know, we're leaving this median as it is right now. That doesn't necessarily preclude that it could be, you know, reduced in dimension. You know, added to sidewalks on either side in the future. That sort of thing. Um, but yeah, this is essentially just, um, as Rick was saying, we're just basically just peeling this back a little bit right now. That's really the only major change. And there's this little bit of a nose that right now is uh, right in the middle of the crosswalk. And so it keep, creates this sort of like little, you know, pinch condition um, in the crosswalk. So we're essentially just demolishing this little nose, 
peeling this back again so that for now at least we're getting that benefit with the entire crosswalk um well the entire the the median does not encroach into the crosswalk as it was previously okay mm -hmm. but that's really as rick was saying the only uh the only change to the geometry that's happening here yeah the first meeting i have a question the new mid block crosswalks that might be coming along with these uh, uh, with these platforms, the side distance from from a horizontal curve geometry perspective, uh, is that, uh, because I think they are they are mid block new mid block crosswalks, correct? Some of them are, Para. Um, this one is not. There actually is a uh, there's a pedestrian actuated signal at this location today. Okay. Um, we're taking advantage of. We are shifting the um, the ramp a little bit better, a little bit over to uh, you know align better and more directly across the street. But uh, it's essentially in the same location as it is today. Um, there's also um, a crossing here that's just being um, shifted over, uh, you know, several feet as well um, in order to to access uh, the platforms. Um, but generally, not a major change from. The, uh, the crossing that's there today. And there's also a mid-block crossing here, which is uncontrolled. Today, we're proposing a uh, rectangular rapid flashing beacon at this location, um, as well as the bump outs to make this, uh, this unmarked crossing, or rather the uh, unsignalized crossing that's here today, um, safer. But uh, yeah, all the crossings you've seen so far are either sort of modest shifts of where they are you know, currently or upgrades of the the current mid-block crossing in this case. So my question is for Mr. Latini. Uh, I'll pick Walnut as an example. So we are moving the crosswalk that is parallel to Walnut Avenue a few feet to the right-hand side. Uh, is, that a con is that crosswalk, is it time? Uh, how is the walk line? I mean, does that crosswalk work with the traffic signal at Walnut? Or when a, when a vehicle makes a right turn on Walnut Avenue with the Block traffic on Walnut. Is there a concern about that traffic uh, impacting the pedestrians that may be coming off the bus? Am I, am Mr. Ladini? No, no, no. I, I, I understand. I, try, I, you know, I don't know if um, William or Mark can jump in on this one. I didn't do the traffic signalization on this. I imagine we've timed it as such, but I don't have the answer at, the, at my fingertips. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we have. Uh, mm -hmm. but... Yeah, I, Mark, would you happen to have the signal plan ready? I mean. You know, it, it's it's not a uh, so basically you know every single one of these crossings we do have a, uh, a pedestrian signal at every crossing so uh, you know pe uh, pedestrians who are accessing the stations or crossing the street you know won't be at the mercy of drivers yielding to them is the is the thinking in terms of how it's actually tied in with this uh, you know the Walnut Ave signal I know that um, that it's pedestrian actuated. On platforms to uh, you know you press the button um, to request the signal to to get off of the platforms. But um, yeah, I would you know as far as the specifics of how the signalization operates there, I think I would need to pull up the signal plan. Um, William, I don't have it in, in front of me. Um, mm -hmm. It's tied in with the intersection. The idea is that that crossing at the platform is now the crossing for that leg of the intersection. It's mm -hmm. tied to the signalization, so you don't have. The signal operating and then pedestrians pushing the button. It's all, all, all connected and coordinated with the Walnut Ave and Columbus that signal. Yeah. 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 Shall we proceed, or did you have other questions about that, Cara? Uh, and you can continue, William. Thank you. Okay. I'll follow up with you, Power. I mean, it's been reviewed. It's been reviewed by Public Works and BTD. So uh, I don't think no, it'll no. change the PIC looking plans, but we'll give you some more comfort on that after this hearing. Yeah, just just take a look at the right turn traffic because now we have an offset crosswalk mm -hmm. that yep. is goes right. So the person who is making a this, this traffic engineering stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep, I, I will respond back to you. Okay, so. I think continuing f from Eggleston Square, uh, the next stop is here at Bray Street or West Walnut Park. Um, you know, at this location, you know, Rick, do you want to take over or you want me to drive? Oh, you, can, you can keep on driving if you'd like so that way I don't have to tell you to shift the sheet if you don't mind. Okay, sure. 
Um, yeah, at this location, um, you know, in terms of curb work, um, we're proposing curb extensions um, on West Walnut Park and on Bancroft Street. You know, these streets meet Columbus at a fairly sharp angle today and lead to these long sort of diagonal crossings. Um, so we're, we're working to, uh, to narrow those crossings and uh, you know, improve the, the safety and accessibility of those crossings. Um, there is a new crosswalk being introduced um, at this location associated with the, uh, the, uh, the bus platforms here. So there's a new crosswalk being added here um, to, uh, to access the, uh, the platforms. Um, again, you see the, uh, the bus stop platforms here. We're generally retaining. So we're, we're demolishing a portion of the median, but retaining these, uh, these bits here that have uh, signal equipment in them, existing signal equipment. And I think that is it for, uh, for curb work um, on this sheet. Again, you can see where ramps are called out for reconstruction, um, you know, signal posts being added. Let's see, and then um, here we're between Bragdon Street and Dimmick Street. Um, and you can see the first of the Dimmick uh, stops here. And I might actually continue to the next sheet because I think you'll be able to, well, actually, no, you can't see the whole intersection there. So we'll, we'll do it. So, so the, this is sort of the southern half of the Columbus Dimmick intersection. You can see that we're, again, adding a new stop here, um, retaining a, a portion of the median with the traffic signal um on this side of the intersection um we're splitting so these are apex ramps today that we're splitting um into perpendicular ramps um to better serve the uh, the new stations that are being introduced and then i'll proceed to the next page and you can see the other station that's being added here once again uh we have a uh, a little portion of the median that is being retained um with a a signal post in it um, but otherwise, uh, this portion of the median is being removed and, uh, yeah, just more of the same in terms of ramp reconstruction and introducing a new platform here. And then continuing to the end of the, uh, the corridor, um, all of this median here is slated for removal until, again, we get closer to the center and Ritchie, um, intersection where we, uh, we retain, uh, a small portion of the median with a signal post and uh, predominantly is, is striping um, improvements through through this portion of the corridor. And uh, and that is where the project concludes. So happy to go back and respond to any specific questions. Uh, any questions or comments by members of the commission? Yeah, um, good morning, everybody. Um, I do have um, some comments I had sent uh, over last night. Um, and I know a lot of them uh, with the plan set that you had sent us, um, but we do want to get uh, a set of plans, you know, revised and sent back so we can improve them. Uh, thank you ahead of time for that. Um, but a lot of our, our comments included, um, you know, stuff with the uh, issues with some of the specs, um, you know, that uh, you went included with the package that we got. Um, and then, you know, some of the biggest comments were just, um, you know, some of the drainage, like say on Jim Cox Street, that's something we, you know, uh, we want to look at again uh, and want to improve. Um, and then also it was just the, um, you know, the floating bus stops that you have. Um, you know, we do want to see, um, you know, how, with how the load's going to be handled on our, our water mains in particular. Um, so. Thank you, Denise. We received you. your comments last night. We'll absolutely uh, resolve them. We don't seem to have much issues with them after reading through them. Uh, I would say end of next week, you'll be getting another set of plans with the revisions in it for your review. Okay, great. Thanks for the update. And then just as far as the loading goes, the contractors out there right now doing some test pits to try and identify utility location off the curb, uh, the distance off the curb and depth of the utilities. So we can better answer those questions about the uh, potential impacts of the foundations. Uh, Eric, I don't know if you have anything else you'd like to add about the co contractors process, Eric Shire from the MBTA, but we're, we were uh, very much aware that um, there's potential there and we're trying to get ahead of that for you. So hopefully we'll have some answers for that as well uh, as part of the submission late next week. Okay, great. Thank you for the update. Chief is uh, Eric Shire from MBTA on this call anywhere? 
Uh, yes, I think Eric. Yes, I'm on the call. Hi, Eric, PJ here. Uh, are we okay with any maintenance agreements that are needed? So we are. We have been working actively with your team on that, and uh, the understanding based on uh, working with Zach on this is that uh, as as this construction proceeds through the fall, we will finalize a, a maintenance agreement with the city, and the project won't be accepted by the city until that document is finalized. Okay, but the spirit of understanding, Eric, is that. Uh, we will work towards the MBTA being the entity that will do the maintenance, right? At a, at a very yes. massive level, that, that's all. Yes. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Eric. Yeah. See you. Are there uh, questions or comments by members of the commission before we get to uh, comments from members of the public? Todd, Robbie. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, and, and, you know, I, I will just insert a quick word as well that, you know, uh, throughout the public process um, that we've had in the neighborhood, um, I think there's been um, fairly broad support for the idea of, uh, of bus lanes, but we have heard a lot of concerns over the lack of dedicated bike facilities on Columbus Ave. Um, so, you know, just as we were discussing about the, uh, the future plans for Eggleston Square, you know, the city has kicked off a process um, that we're actively working on right now um, to, to find bike, you know, ways to accommodate bikes and improve uh, accommodations for bikes throughout the neighborhood as well, um, looking at, you know, how can we make crossings of Washington Street, Columbus, Amory, um, those sorts of streets safer through the neighborhood? How can we make, uh, you know, alternative routes, neighborhood streets, you know, more attractive and kind of create a legible, comfortable network for, uh, for all ages and abilities that, um, you know, creates good sort of crosstown connections through this part of, of the city um, that don't exist today. Um, and, uh, and address some of those concerns that we had heard raised. So, um, you know, this project, while it is uh, predominantly focused on, on uh, you know, improving the reliability and quality of transit service and uh, some of the pedestrian safety concerns we've heard, um, the, you know, the comments regarding uh, bike accommodations ha um, have not fallen on deaf ears. So we, we do have um, an active process in the works and in the pipeline on that as well. So we just wanted to provide that bit of context as well before we move on. Thank you, William. Other uh, questions or comments, um, either from the project team or from uh, the commission? All right, so uh, we'll take uh, questions and comments uh, and feedback from members of the public as, um, as Jeff and Sarah, uh, Carolyn, Magda, Susan, and Allison have all uh, done already. Just please, uh, if you can, uh, uh, Put your name in the in the chat, uh, and we'll call on you in the order that you're in there, starting with uh, with Jeff Ferris. So, uh, Jeff, if you'd like to unmute yourself and, and offer some comments on this. Hello? Uh, Jeff, we can, we can hear you are also getting uh, feedback, although that just seemed to end. So now, go go ahead. Okay, can you hear me now? Perfectly. Oh, oh uh, still a little bit of feedback. Is it, wait, is there, is it, is it speaking on air? No. Mr. Ferris, if you uh, turn off the volume on your computer, um, but keep your microphone unmuted, um, you may not be able to hear us while you're speaking, but we should be able to hear you. And then you can turn the volume back on after. Jeff, let us know if that works for you. Okay. Uh, Jeff Projector, do you want us to come back to you after we go to Sarah? So why don't we why don't we start with you and then Jeff will we'll come back to you after uh, after Sarah's offered some testimony. Sarah, go ahead. Hi, um, can you hear me? 
We can. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I appreciated William's last comment about the uh, many people unhappy at the lack of bike accommodations. But um, yeah, so it makes it hard to know what to say. I'm obviously glad to see attention to the Columbus Ave corridor and the pedestrian and bus improvements. But sadly, this proposal, and maybe this isn't even a PIC decision, but it still looks like the car is king in Boston. You've got six lanes, four of them for cars, two moving lanes, two parking lanes. Um, the bus is hugely important. So I guess what I question is giving so much public space for storage of private property and making the bicyclists feel like second class citizens. And I don't have an exact answer, but things that um, are bothering me, and so I'll just put it out there hoping you'll continue to think about it. The, I went back and read the JP, Plan JP Rocks report last night, and it was very specific about wanting to accommodate all modes, and the design still had to be worked out, but it was part of the discussion. Um, and then the whole, in one of the public meetings, the whole question came out about Apparently, unfortunately, in some quarters, bike accommodations are equated with gentrification. And I'd like to challenge the city to decouple those. And I think one, um, easier said than done, but one option would be to just do more, especially during COVID-19 on a trial temporary basis uh, when we need social distancing and um, more people out walking or trying trying to get places uh, on foot and on bike, um, put them everywhere or everywhere you can, certainly on the major thoroughfares. And um, it's incremental, I know, but I, I just wanted to put it out there that it, it kind of it gives the opposite message of complete streets. Thank you for listening. Sarah, thanks for your, your comments. Uh, Jeff, do you wanna uh, give it a go? How's that? Perfect. Okay, so uh, along with what Sarah is saying, this, 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 this project should not go forward as, as is. There's several possibilities. Uh, what I was looking at was a year ago, there was a curbside bus lane proposed what did accommodate bicycles much better than what this did. Um, it was switched to the center bus lane. Uh, this stretch of Columbus Avenue is challenging even for skilled urban cyclists like myself. The center bus lane makes it even worse, contrary to city policy of making our city streets more bike friendly. The curbside bus lane was never presented to or vetted by the public. In addition to the, the bicycle problems, this plan drives traffic into the neighborhood. It describes that it, it, its success depends on 10 to 20% of the traffic diverting to neighborhood streets, which is kind of contrary to the concept of we're gonna find neighborhood streets for bikes to use as well. Uh, you know, in, in Boston, we have such a crazy street pattern that a main street for a car is typically a main street for a bicycle as well. Look at your comment. Beacon Street, Mass Ave, and this is this is the same thing. Um, so, saying we'll do a study after this to find a bike accommodation, which you might not even find, makes no sense. You know, this along with that, uh, you have this uh, Eggleston Square study. I mean, these things should all be done cohesively together, not one before the other. So. Um, this, this project is not ready to go forward. Um, I've had some communication with Liverpool Streets, who's not here uh, attending this meeting today. Uh, they don't like this plan. Um, they, I think, have had some communication with, with, with uh, you guys. I see Chris nodding his head. Um, 
looking at ways to make a, a bike accommodation work along with the center bus lanes. It's something new to me. I haven't really studied it that much, but this isn't ready. It's not a complete street. Um, uh, the rush to go forward, uh, it was, it was not indicated by the MBTA's Focus 40 as a priority bus lane corridor. Mm -hmm. um, the Go Boston 2030 calls this for, to be a multimodal corridor. So this is not ready to go forward. So basically, um, thank you. Uh, thank you, David. Um, I think we'll, we'll go to the comments, but at some point, uh, as we sort of go through them, William, I think it'd be useful to be able to sort of talk through things like uh, Jeff's point around sort of center running versus side running, Sarah's point around sort of parking versus uh, bike lane, some of, the, some of those pieces, and just sort of the status of uh, the overall bike planning. And, yeah. just, and uh, to Jeff's point, we did receive a, uh, a letter from uh, from Stacey Thompson from Little Streets uh, on this as well. Um, so you're right, they've been in, in communication uh, with us. And um, the next person was Carolyn, uh, Carolyn Rice. Hi, thank you very much. Thanks for um, the presentation and letting me speak today. Um, I uh, live in the Eggleston area and I'm a member of Eggleston Square Neighborhood Association. I totally support uh, this bus lane project. I, I think it, the number one thing that comes out for me is it prioritizes bus transit. It's three really busy bus routes that it really helps move through a very congested area of Columbus Ave. Plus, it gives really great access for people coming from Eggleston Square. We have a lot of senior citizens in Eggleston Square. They can get on that bus and be down to Jackson Square easily and quickly. So, so that's the first thing. The second thing is the pedestrian improvements are really significant. Uh, Eggleston Square Neighborhood Association has been working with Walk Boston and Eggleston Square Main Streets, Urban Edge. We've been working for the past few years on pedestrian improvements to cross Columbus. Uh, we have bus stops that are on narrow sidewalks in front of businesses right now that are hard to maneuver. Uh, Columbus Ave is a great big divide of busy traffic through the square and on down to Jackson Square. This really makes significant pedestrian improvements, um, both on the sidewalks and in the crossings. Um, I also wanted to um, really give credit to the uh, transit team on this for their really extraordinary outreach over the past year. They have met, they have provided all kinds of meeting opportunities, both small group they, and, and big groups online, in person. They did a lot of outreach to all the various uh, constituencies that live and work on the square. So uh, I really do appreciate that. And the final point I wanted to note was that um, Eggleston Square Neighborhood Association and other groups, Friends of Lawson Park, Rubenick, we're all working on place-making improvements uh, in Eggleston Square, particularly two parks that are that are on this route and uh, anything that can be done. Um, so, so the crossings all help us and the sidewalk improvements help us, but also anything that can be worked into this plan that helps us perk up those two little parks would be great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Carolyn. Uh, Magda, uh, you are next. Hi, can you hear me? Perfectly. Okay, hi, thank you for letting me speak and thank you for letting me be here today. Um, I'm here to say that I, first of all, I live on Columbus Ave, 1950. Uh, this building is right by the Eggleston Square sign that I live at, and I'm this primary contact for the Robert Lawson Park, which is the park where the Eggleston Square sign is. And I, first of all, want to thank William and his team because they have been uh, outreaching to the neighborhood and I've heard, I've talked to them, we've had many meetings in the neighborhood association. Uh, we've, um, mm -hmm. they give us the opportunity to share our feedback about what we think needs to be improved in the area. So I just want to thank them for being so um, inclusive and wanting to hear from the residents and of, of this area. Um, I want to say that I'm also in support of the bus lane uh, because this street is very busy with buses, at least from Jackson Square going to Ashmont. I know at least in, in those Dorchester and other areas, there's at least, I think, four buses or three to four buses going that way and also more buses going through Washington on the Washington route. So 
the buses it is are frequent enough that I think they are causing issues with traffic. Traffic is very busy here and it's very loud for the residents. And I think that if the buses have their own lane, it will really help the congestion in the area. I really also like the improvements they're offering for sidewalks um, because it is really dangerous to cross Columbus Ave, um, especially here at this intersection. I think this intersection of Washington Columbus uh, is, is, is dreadful. <laughs> it is a scary place. I live right here. Anytime I want to cross the street to go to the bank or anything, I'm really scared. And it, it just doesn't work. So, so far, what I've seen, um, I'm pleased with some of the improvements they're offering. I also want um, like this center section to stay on people's mind because there are so many car accidents that happen here. And I think this bus lane will help slow down all of the traffic here because unfortunately this is, this is, this feels like a highway at times um, because people do speed down the street. And, and I think that reducing the lane for the cars will make it safer for residents. Um, I, I, I just, I'm happy this is happening because I also work in Northeastern and I have to transit. I, I use buses a lot to go to Ruggles. And, and I know a lot of people here work in the city, in this area. So this, this bus lane, because the T doesn't run through here anymore. We just had, we used to have the Eggleston Square T stop, which is now gone, but we really rely on um, the buses for people who live on Columbus Ave. And I think it will be really, really helpful for us. Um, like um, Carolyn, um, I know Carolyn, she's in um, the Eggleston Square Neighborhood Association, which I go to sometimes. And, and um, I, I really do agree that we're hoping that this is also going to have our local park, like the Robert Lawson Park right here. Um, a lot of our small parks in this neighborhood are kind of abandoned, and we're hoping that uh, making this area more pedestrian friendly will really create a, a human scale friendly you know environment um we, i can never take my child to a park because i'm always worried about the car and, and it's not friendly for pedestrians so anyways um thank you and um happy to be here and support this initiative uh, thank you magda uh, uh, you were next Thank you. Um, I'll try to be brief. I want to uh, second Carolyn's comments and Magda's comments about uh, community outreach. There was a lot of community outreach and also um, that this, I really believe that this will be a better experience, not only for the bus riders, but also for pedestrians. Um, and so I do support the project. I, I do think it's unfortunate that the bike issue and and also to a certain extent double parking and deliveries on Columbus have not been addressed and have been kind of deferred to a later time. Uh, we're looking forward to the the related Eggleston Square project. Um, so I you know parking versus deliveries versus bikes is a big issue and it's it's really unfortunate that that hasn't been addressed. Um, but I think overall the this is going to be an improvement and I look forward to sort of the next phase to say, do we get rid of parking and, and uh, I can't believe I'm saying that get rid of parking because parking is such a big issue in the neighborhood, but um, I'm, I'm really, we're trusting that William will be back very soon to address the bikes. I think part of the problem with the bike strategy is there's not an obvious one. Um, I think Jeffrey's point about um, cars diverted and then trying to take the bikes through the neighborhood is, is a real one. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Allison. Um, hi, good morning. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Oh, we can. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Um, I have um, experience both on buses through this area and as a bike rider. So, um, just wanted to throw some history here that um, 
The Seaver Street uh, bike lane was supposed to continue on Columbus um, to uh, Jackson. It was part of uh, a Boston bike network that the city promoted probably 15 years ago. Um, so right now, if you're riding um, at, from the Southwest Corridor and you want to go over to White Stadium at Franklin Park, um, where, where will you ride? Uh, this, is, this feels quite dangerous. So I am advocating for a much more holistic um, approach to um, looking at this corridor and thinking also about Columbus from Jackson to Roxbury Crossing. And my uh, hearing comments about um, speed, et cetera, that the speed is so much worse from Jackson to Roxbury Crossing and towards Ruggles. That's the area that I think people need to focus on for traffic calming. And um, so I want, I want to pull that into the greater picture of what happens with, uh, with that corridor. Um, related to the bike network, um, Eggleston Square, of course, is a Main Street district with local businesses, and it has these great uh, public facilities, the local library and access to uh, Franklin Park. And so you have to think about um, safe bike access to those places. I, I uh, really strongly advocate for doing a plan with the community about that. Um, related to Jackson, um, these buses, the 22 pulls into Jackson. Um, the, tw the riders that wait for the 22 at Jackson have no benches to sit on. It's a terrible, terrible uh, station for um, uh, feeling comfortable. It's not, uh, the 22 is a very popular route. The other buses that use this corridor, the 44 and the 29, are not as crowded. But the 22, you'll see 30, 40 people lined up waiting to, to uh, board. And it, it's not, the frequency is also pretty bad. So th these are T issues, but I, I do want um, uh, everyone to be aware of them. Um, and thank you for letting me comment. Of course, Allison. Um, my apologies before uh, before Mark. Uh, that's why I, I uh, need to uh, drop off for a moment. Apara is going to uh, be chairing uh, for the, the next session of this. Just uh, a, a quick note, uh, which I'm, I'm sure Apara will, will cover as well. But if William and the project team, I, I think obviously we've heard about center and side running bus sure. lanes uh, from a, a number of different, uh, Jeff in particular. Um, the impact on sort of neighborhood side streets uh, of any sort of version of traffic, um, how this uh, ensures that we are still thinking about those really important critical bike connections, particularly the open spaces that Allison um, just mentioned, uh, and, the, and the sort of the, the general and broader point about sequencing. How do we make sure that um, I think we, we all feel the need to be sort of moving at pace to improve our streets, but how we make sure that uh, we are, we're doing that in a way that is sort of logical and makes sense, which I feel like has been uh, part of these comments. And then, I, not for us, but to Allison's point, if somebody from the key also wants to comment on, uh, respond to any of the Jackson Square Station comments, um, I uh, appreciate those as well. And I'll be back as soon as I, I can be. Thank you, Jim. I think you can see it's okay. Sure. Would we, would we like to complete all the comments and then address them at one time, maybe? Yes, we can. That might be the best. So I think the next person is, let me make sure, yeah. is uh, Mark Ebuna. I apologize if I mispronounced your last name. Mark Ebuna. Yep, uh, no worries. It's Mark Ebuna, yeah. yes. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for your time today, and um, I really appreciate the. Uh, I want to echo all of the comments um, previously about uh, the outreach. Um, and I'm a resident of 225 Center Street, and so my apartment um, for the last several years has actually been a view of this specific corridor on the Jackson Square end. Um, and I and I do uh, fully rec uh, recognize and appreciate the work that the entire team has done uh, into into this thoughtful process, um, and in particular. Uh, I think this bus lane is in incredibly important for um, not just improving the pedestrian accessibility in this area and safety around um, uh, around some of these really, really high speed uh, streets because they just feel so wide. Um, I think uh, they also, I also watch uh, these buses get tied up in traffic. 
um, and I have for several years. And even with, even as uh, you know, the uh, COVID has, has made it challenging for uh, for folks to travel. Um, I've seen traffic pick up again on Columbus Avenue, um, and uh, I can see how uh, the traffic and the congestion has an, has a direct effect on the regularity of the uh, the 22 bus. Um, you know, dispatching and frequency, bus frequency issues aside uh, on the MBTA's end. So the, I, 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 I'm really grateful for this work. Um, I think my only feedback, um, oh, I think also I want to also uh, echo the um, encouragement for the city to be bold um, about uh, doing some early action for, for bus, uh, for bike accommodations. Um, there has been amazing feedback uh, and an experience from uh, what, what I've experienced with the, the Healthy Street Boston Network, um, I do think that there is an opportunity for, for better connections here on Columbus, uh, Columbus Avenue for the bike facilities. Um, if there's any way that we can accelerate that, um, I don't know if that's related to this process and this hearing today, but um, I think specifically related to the infrastructure that has been presented to this um, committee today, I think one of the bigger issues that I can see with the removal of the island is the optical illusion of the road being wider and um, I do see folks um, not so infrequently actually using uh, that mid block, mid block cut in the um, in the center island um, closer to center street for u-turns even though there is the, uh, even though u-turns are prohibited here uh, I'm not entirely sure why that exists why why that cut in the median exists maybe there was a a business or something at some point that needed to use that as a left turn onto Columbus Avenue. Um, I'm just wondering if there's a way that um, flex posts uh, closer to that that portion can be added to discourage that kind of um, dangerous behavior across four lanes, um, rather than now, uh, you know, with cars now having to, if they do try to that maneuver, they're going to have to cross across the bus lanes um, in addition to um, uh, the travel lane. Um, but other than that, I think this is amazing, um, and uh, I look forward to uh, getting. I, I look forward to enduring the construction process as it as it moves forward. Uh, it it's um, I, I'm all for it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Moose. On your team, would you care to uh, reflect on some of the thoughts that were shared with us? Sure, sure. Um, well, thank you, everybody who's come out and who's provided comments. Um, you know, many of these comments are comments that, that we've uh, we've heard before, um, and so I, yeah, I would like to address just a few of them. You know, in terms of the the center running bus lanes versus side running bus lanes that have been mentioned, you know, we did look at both of those um, options early on. We also, in some of the early conversations that we had with the community, talked through the alternatives. You know, what you know, what having the bus lanes on the side versus having them. In the center means what the trade-offs were and you know i think what was sort of fundamental um, about or you know one of the key factors in that decision was that when we actually dug into the corridor a little bit deeper and realized uh you know some of the features such as the topography which uh you know leads to sort of slower bike speeds on the uphill portions of the corridor like when you're approaching franklin park or the sort of bump around dim fleet um, as well as uh for many parts of the day the frequency of buses um, you know, the, these are, they exceed a threshold that we would, you know, actually uh, designate those as shared safe facilities. Um, so in other words, whether the bus lanes were on the right-hand side or in the center, you know, we wouldn't have officially designated them as a shared bus bike lane, um, you know, under any circumstances. That, that was a, you know, direction that we got very firmly from active transportation early on. You know, their best practice thresholds, as I mentioned, for you know when you know the speeds of bikes and buses are comparable and headways you know the distance between the time between buses is uh is longer um you know then it becomes more appropriate for those facilities to be shared but when there's very frequent buses and differences in speed then it leads to uh, you know frequent conflicts and so that's why you know while we're not pro you know expressly prohibiting anybody from entering the lane in a bike we don't necessarily want to actively encourage it either because you know it's it doesn't again meet those sort of thresholds so you know when it became clear that that was that the side running option was not really going to be able to be a shared um facility 
in any case, you know, I think that's when we started having these conversations about pushing for the highest and best order of bus priority that we could get, you know, with these new uh, bus platforms, um, you know, and, and although the street does feel quite wide, you know, it does present some challenges in terms of trying to accommodate, you know, the, uh, the bus lanes, travel lanes, some amount of parking, even if, and even if we were to eliminate all the parking, it still, you know, has some dimensional challenges and constraints points of trying to introduce a bike facility that is, you know, wide and protected for the entirety of the corridor, you know, that, which was really the challenge that we faced. And so that's why, you know, although, you know, I think our ideal version of Columbus Ave would have another 10 feet of right of way where we could, you know, fit everything that we want. Um, you know, it's, it, we're kind of working with what we have and trying to balance a lot of competing sort of needs and wants from the neighborhood. And, um, you know, so that's sort of how we landed on, on this concept. And we, we do take it very seriously, um, the efforts to try to improve, you know, cycling. And, and I think um, that ties into the question that Jeff had about, had about um, you know, traffic being, you know, pushed to neighborhood streets. Um, you know, I think it's, it's fair to say that there will be some diversion from Columbus Ave um, as a result of the project. Um, you know, what we're looking at very closely through the Eggleston project is how can we manage both speeds and volumes on those neighborhood streets to make sure that they still feel comfortable for biking, make them even more comfortable than they are today. You know, in some cases, those are used sort of as de facto connections by cyclists, but they're not ideal um, in many cases. So, you know, we think there are significant improvements that we can make. Um, understanding and recognizing that nothing perfectly replicates the path of Columbus Avenue besides Columbus Avenue, you know, that's, um, that's an unfortunate fact of the matter, but we, you know, I think we do see opportunities, um, understanding and recognizing the constraints in terms of on-street parking and things like that, where, where we can, um, you know, still make significant improvements um, and get cyclists, again, safely across some of these major streets like Columbus and Washington, um, provide connections to important public spaces like, the, uh, like Franklin Park, like the Southwest Corridor, you know, crosstown connections to those spaces that don't really exist today. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think we, you know, we pledge that we'll continue to, to work, you know, with energy and vigor on, on that, um, that issue. Um, and, you know, Matt, did you want to say a quick word about also the volumes and how we, you know, I think you, you have some perspective from some of the other open projects we've done as well. Did yeah, so good morning, everyone. Uh, Matt Moran from the uh, BTD Transit team. Uh, so as William said, and I think as Jeff alluded to, we looked at um, three different conditions for traffic volumes. So we looked at 100% um, of existing volume, so traffic roughly as it is today. Um, but then we know that through past projects and past analysis, that some level of traffic will um, divert or people will shift modes. Um, so we looked at what would happen if we did an 80% volume and a 90% volume. Um, and so why, why those, that range? So um, uh, for a bus lane project that we did in Roslindale, uh, we noticed that there was about a 5% diversion of people onto buses. So the buses on that corridor after we implemented the bus bike lane actually increased by about 5%. Um, on Brighton Avenue um, in Austin, we saw that traffic went down by about 13% on the Brighton Avenue corridor, um, but bus ridership went up by 10 to 15%. So we have these volumes where we see that people are either shifting modes or they're shifting perhaps the time of day that they uh, use the corridor or they're finding a new route. So that's why we want to see sort of what traffic would do in that 80%, 90%, 100% uh, scenario, those three cases. Um, Based on the analysis that we did with the 100% uh, volumes, the traffic actually works pretty well on the corridor. The speeds tend to get a bit slower, um, but at the end of the day, you can process the amount of traffic that you have out there today um, by improving the signalization and also by, by taking the buses out of the general purpose lanes. You're making those general purpose lanes operate more efficiently. So in general, that's why we looked at that range of analysis. But as I said before, um, the analysis shows the traffic generally works with the existing, or rather with the sort of volume, the 100% volumes. Thank, Thank you. you, Matt. Thank you, William. Uh, I think Chris would like to make a follow-up comment. Uh, Jeffrey, if you could be kind to join the conversation again. 
Yes, thank you. Um, just sort of, you know, following up and, and, and complimenting uh, comments from Carolyn and, and, and Magda and, and Susan. Um, not to be disillusioned, you know, the things that I'm asking for and we that want to have bike accommodation included does not preclude all the fabulous pedestrian and sidewalk improvements of the project, but that you're not done. You need to have a plan for the bikes before this goes forward. And as you said at the meeting, you've got this Eggleston Square planning. All these should be done cohesively, not, you know, we've heard it for bikes. Oh, we'll do that later. Oh, we'll do that later. And, and maybe later never happens. This needs to be done as a cohesive project and all these wonderful pedestrian amenities will happen at the same time. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey. So, uh, Todd, I don't think there are any other further comments. Um, I, I, I did just want to address a couple of other quick points really quickly. Sorry, um, <laughs> No problem. Um, no, Jeff, we, we totally hear you on the staging of this, and, and, you know, I think we agree that in an ideal world, everything would be perfectly, you know, sort of coordinated. Um, you know, I think we're working with the reality that the, the T is actually, you know, the uh, who had the sort of active design contract for this project, and they, in terms of, you know, the reference you made why this, why this corridor, you know, was prioritized, it was really in response to the enduring ridership that the T has seen um, on this corridor during COVID and has really pushed very hard for this project to be completed on a faster timeline um, because there's actually still crowding issues, particularly on the 22 bus on this corridor you know, at the bus stops and on the buses. Um, and as traffic is worsening, you know, I think that's, um, you know, something that, uh, that the team really wants to address. And, you know, I think they see the, you know, one of the most effective ways of doing that is just being able to run the buses very efficiently um, so that we don't have buses bunching up one after the other, or crowding happening on the buses and at the stops. And so that really has uh, been one of the reasons why, you know, this project has gotten um, a bit of an extra push was, was you know, the T wanting to, uh, you know, include this in sort of its rapid response um, to the COVID situation for its passengers. Um, and, you know, to the point of Eccleston Square, that is a city-led project, obviously will coordinate with the T and make sure that it, you know, makes sense with what's being, uh, you know, done on Columbus Avenue. Um, but, uh, you know, we are working to move on a pretty aggressive timeline with that as well and want to engage very actively with the community. I think a lot of the, um, the connections that have been made through working with the community on this project, you know, we can leverage and continue to, you know, use that good dialogue that, that has been going on um, to, to help move that along. So I don't think it's like we're starting from from you know square one necessarily a lot of the uh, improvements for the neighborhood streets are actually uh, specific projects called out in the JP Rocks transportation action plan as well. Um, so yeah, I think there's um, I, I I understand where you're coming from and, and agree with you in principle and also uh, just, just kind of want to provide that bit of context about you know why it is being staged the way that it is and how we are trying to get it done you know as close as possible you know. In terms of you know temporally speaking, um, as we as we can achieve, um, and then um, I appreciate the comments that were made with respect to uh, continuing to improve pedestrian safety and public space improvements. You know, while this project is making some pedestrian um, enhancements, enhancements to crossings. Um, you know, I think the Eggleston Square intersection, um, as people have mentioned, is not one that is well loved and still needs some more attention after this. And so we are going to. You know, continue to provide attention to that and look at the um, opportunities for, you know, making, you know, helping the grassroots pu uh, public realm of enhancement sort of movement that's happening in the neighborhood as well um, as we can. So I think that that concludes kind of the, uh, yeah, my comments on the comments. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Sorry, Magda. I hope I'm not again mispronouncing your name. Uh, you have a quick follow-up comment. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, um, I just wanted to just add a few words about the fact that there isn't any um, train that would connect Roxbury, JP, really to the Ashmont and Dorchester, Madapan area. So I think that I just want to reiterate that buses is all we have to connect those neighborhoods. 
And I, I, this is something I just wanted to mention and keep um, that I want everybody to keep in mind that it's really hard for people, let's say, to commute from Roxbury to um, Dorchester without having to take the T all the way downtown and then taking the red line. So the buses are really necessary for a lot of people in this area and a lot of people who travel, try to get to places. And um, I know this is just um, an improvement on this one corridor, but I just wanted everybody to keep this in mind that, that I do think that more work like this and other solutions to help, you know, facilitate the community between these two areas would be greatly appreciated, by, I think, by a lot of people. Thank you so much for your comments. I believe that concludes any public comments that is part of this forum or this process. Uh, so are there any questions by fellow commission members at this point? Uh, any questions by uh, the PSC staff members? Hearing none, I'd like to hear a motion for this item. A public hearing continued uh, agenda item three. Uh, I make a motion to approve a joint petition by the MBTA and the City of Boston Transportation Department for specific repairs on Columbus Avenue as more particularly read into the record by the, uh, the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, motion passes. Thank you so much, everyone. Now we will uh, move towards the public hearing section of today's agenda. First item, public hearing number one, on a petition by the City of Boston Public Works Department to rescind the line and grade approval from Rolling Lane, which was a public way in Roxbury, located from Amory Street, Amory Street Connector to a point generally 290 feet north basically at Alliance Way as approved by Public Improvement Commission on July 25, 2019. This was shown on, uh, introduced as new business on June 18, 2020 as shown on a set of plans in title City of Boston, Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Line and Grade Plan, Rolling Lane, Jackson Square, Public Way, JB, two sheets of October 2018. I apologize. We actually uh, have Eversource on the phone. Um, so if we can go back to the hearing. Uh, yes. Okay. So if you could temporarily suspend the opening of public hearing, uh, if we can have, uh, I forget who was there from. Uh, we will go back to the utility poll hearing number one of today's agenda. Uh, could the person from Amos Post please join the conversation? Hello? Hi, Miss, is this Karen Johnson? This is Karen Johnson. I, my apologies for my technical difficulties earlier. I'm so sorry. But I am here on behalf of Everstores. Thank you. Thank you. And we are requesting a relocation for a poll on um, Norwell Street in Dorchester to accommodate a um, race crossing. Uh, Todd, can you present the plans? Because right now we are not showing, it, showing anything. I'm Sorry, can you repeat that? No, since we are not showing any plans on the screen, Mr. Leiby, could you share? Can I share the plans? Yes. Let's see, one moment. Karen, we have the plan up for you. Um, so if you just want to speak to what it is that you are proposing <laughs> specifically, um, I believe we can all see the plan. Thank you for that. I'm proposing to relocate pole 133 over 8A, approximately eight feet, to accommodate the uh, uh, ramp and the um, race crossing at the corner of Norwell and Park Street. And that is um, in in conjunction with the Neighborhood Flow Streets program. Thank you, Karen. Uh, recommendation from staff. 
We visited, I'm, the, I'm, yeah, we visited the site. Um, this looks fine. Uh, as she stated, this is to accommodate um, some new pedestrian facilities in the area. Um, the pole is staying in front of the same residence, um, and uh, the residence has uh, the owner of that residence has been notified and does not object to the relocation. Thank you. Uh, are there any comments from the public? Uh, seeing none. Uh, any questions from fellow commission members? Hearing none, I'd like to hear a motion on this item, the poll hearing. I make a motion to approve a joint petition by Verizon New England and Eversource for a poll relocation on Norwell Street as further read into the record by the chair. Sorry, Second. do I hear All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, back to public hearing number one, uh, as read by me a few minutes ago, uh, is uh, Todd, who is presenting this? Uh, I am. Uh, so to go over what we discussed uh, a few months ago regarding this action, uh, this is a little bit atypical for us, but um, Last year, a number of petitioners uh, submitted uh, a proposal to us to lay out a new public way uh, in the Jackson Square neighborhood. Um, there are uh, five or six different uh, landowners that were involved in this. Um, the, mo the petition was approved by the Public Improvement Commission back in July of 2019. Since then, uh, we have been working with some of the petitioners to try, or we've been working with all of the petitioners, I should say, to acquire the necessary uh, highway easement documents. Um, and we have been unable to acquire that document from one of the petitioners. Uh, this essentially leaves the remaining petitioners unable to perform the construction work necessary to um, uh, establish this public way. Uh, so because of that, uh, we are of the opinion that um, we need to rescind the previous approval uh, of this public way. Um, in its place, uh, some of the petitioners are going to uh, request a new private way in the same general location uh, that will not impact the one abutter who was unable to deliver the highway easement that we required. Thank you, Tom. Uh, any comments by fellow commission members? Any comments by the public? Seeing none, hearing none. I'd like to hear a motion for on public hearing number one. I make a motion to approve public hearing item number one to rescind the line and green approval of Brewery Lane as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, motion passes. Next item on the agenda under public hearings, public hearing number two. On a joint petition by Jackson Square Partners Limited Liability LLC, 25 Emory Apartments LLC, 250 Center Street Housing LLC, the Massachusetts Bay Transport Authority, and the Massachusetts Department of Transportation for the layout, approval of a new private way that's open to public travel in Roxbury, known as Brewery Lane, from Emory Street slash Emory Street Connector to a point approximately 290 feet in the northwesterly at Alliance Way. Uh, this was introduced as a new business on July 23rd, 2020, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Layout Approval Plan, Rory Lane, Jackson Square, Private Way, Open to Public Travel, Jamaica Plain, two sheets dated July 2020. Thank you, Thank you, and good morning. My name is Richard Thal. I'm the executive director of the Jamaica Plain Neighbor Development Corporation, and I'm here today on behalf of Jackson Square Partners, which is the consortium of developers that has been working since the Article 80 approval we got actually in, in late 2007 to bring back to life this area that really was the almost the vet last vestiges of the destruction that was wrought by the I-95 fiasco. And it's been a long process and many, many people in the city have been very involved in it, and very supportive of it and had many twists and turns. But we're really excited that th there are three sites and, and the improvements that uh, John Schmidt is gonna walk us through in a minute are gonna unlock 
the development potential of the largest site, which we call Site 3 in Jackson Square, right across from the T-stop, and between a project that JPNEC is weeks away from beginning construction on, fingers crossed, and a, a larger project that our sister organization, the Community Builders, has now obtained all the financing for and is moving toward the closing next year. On that site, this will create over 150 units of mixed income housing, of which more than 70% will be permanently affordable. So it's been a long process, but we're, we're pleased to have reached this point. And so I want to turn it over now uh, to John Schmidt from Niche Engineering, who can walk us through what's being proposed. Thank you, Niche. Go for it, John. Can you see my uh, plan? Uh, not quite yet. Uh, let me try doing this again. Present now your entire screen. Public hearing. No, public hearing. Yeah. Now? Negate. So, PIC staff is presenting. Thank you. Yeah, we've got the plan up for you, John. I appreciate it. Um, so we basically we relayed out Brewery Lane as a private way, um, and we are maintaining the existing curb line and sidewalk along the project side. So we have a um, ten foot wide concrete sidewalk and tree foot and street lighting, as was originally approved at the when this was approved at the public way. We have twenty two feet of pavement, and then we have a five foot wide concrete sidewalk on the opposite side. Uh, that along the abutter. Um, this is designed in a manner that should, at some point in the future, the city choose or a developer choose to move to the public way. The roadway can be widened to the south and easily reconstructed or modified into a public way by widening the pavement and, re and widening the sidewalks there. Um, we are using city standard city standard street lights, um, and uh, essentially that's it. Um, it's going to provide two-way traffic on 22 feet of paved surface. Sorry, John, if you could summarize, uh, what is the street layout? Is it a 30 or a 40? The, the, actually, the layout is 40 or greater um, because we're doing it, we're meeting the, the abutters property line. Okay, but today we are laying on a private way that at least 40 feet wide with two five-foot sidewalks. Uh, it's, we have a 10-foot sidewalk, 20, 10, 22 feet of pavement and a five foot sidewalk. Got it, thank you. Um, any questions by commission members? Any comments by our audience? Seeing none, hearing none. I'd like to get a motion on public hearing number two. By public hearing agenda item two, I make a motion to approve a joint petition for layout approval uh, of an uh, uh, area known as Brewery Lane and is more particularly read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item number three, public hearing three. On a petition by Washington Pine MMLLC for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement based at the Washington Public Way in West Roxbury. Located on its southeasterly side at address number 3368, generally south west of Lane Road. This was uh, heard under new business on July 23rd, 2020, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston. Engineering Division Easement Plan 3368, Washington Street, Jamaica Plain, one sheet dated August 2020. Good. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good morning, uh, members of the commission. This is David Aiken from the Community Builders. Uh, we are uh, working on this development in conjunction with the Pine Street Inn, and uh, we are back again after the new business hearing. Uh, we're looking forward to moving this uh, development, which has 202 housing units, including 140 permanent supportive housing units, forward as soon as possible. Uh, we also have John Nitch here from uh, John Schmidt from Nitch Engineering, uh, as well as. Um, representatives from our architect, Rody Architects, and our geotechnical consultants, GEI consultants, in case there are any questions. 
on the specific repair, pedestrian easement, or uh, supportive excavation. Um, John, I do have the specific repair and the pedestrian easement plans here that I could pull up if yours are not work working. I do not have the SOE, though. Um, yeah, if you're more technical savvy than I am, please go for it. I think we're starting with the pedestrian easement. See if this works. You got it. <laughs> so the, the intent of the pedestrian easement is to provide a minimum six foot wide travel way, um, concrete pavement, <laughs> concrete surface travel way for accessible access. At the, uh, prior to the new business, the Disabilities Commission had requested if we can widen this in an area where the building is set back a little bit. So the easement that is before you now provides a minimum six foot wide uh, pedestrian access, and then it widens to eight feet or greater uh, where the building is set back. Um, and as indicated in, as this, in the drawing that's before you. Sorry, I mean, uh, comments by fellow commission members? Uh, comments by either Todd or Abby from uh, PIC staff? On this. Hearing none uh, and seeing no comments through the comment process, uh, I'd like to hear a motion on item number three, PH3. Regarding public hearing uh, agenda item number three, I make a motion to approve a petition to accept a pedestrian easement on Washington Street as further read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, motion passes. Public hearing number four, on a petition by Washington Pine MM LLC for the making of specific repairs within Washington Street Public Way, West Roxbury, located on its southeasterly side at address number 3368, generally southwest of Glen Road, consisting of curb, sidewalk, and roadway reconstruction, as well as new and relocated speciality pavements street lighting infrastructure, strong drain infrastructure, street trees, planters, landscaping, irrigation infrastructure, bike tracks, and the removal of a driveway curb cut. This was heard under new business on July 23rd, 2020, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan 3368 Washington Street, JP, which is dated August 2020. Uh, good morning, John Schmidt with uh, Niche Engineering. Uh, the specific repairs that we propose are reconstructing the sidewalk in front of our proposed building uh, to comply with the complete street requirements. We are providing 18 inch wide pervious pavers along the curb line. We have two raised planter beds um, in front of the main entrance that will provide uh, low shrub landscaping. We have five street trees um, and we had the tree hearing on August 6th and we are expecting the decision soon. There was no public, uh, there was the tree hearing was open to the public, but there was no one from the public that raised any opposition to the removal of the existing trees out there. So we don't anticipate any issues. Uh, and then we also provide an important shadow conduit uh, as suggested and as required by the smart utilities. Uh, as part of the public uh, new business, uh, common conversation. There was a question, but if we we're coordinated with the streetscape in the area, and I believe that we are, there's also a question about the size of the tree pits, and they are now 24, they're increased to be 24 minimum square feet. Um, and I think that is the extent of the presentation. Uh, I think, jo uh, uh, John, I would, just David Aiken, I would, I would add that. Uh, we also have added uh, bicycle racks on the street there. Uh, we received, you know, initial uh, tap of comments from uh, William Moose. I think that we also intend to be and continue to be part of the larger conversation around some of the concerns around uh, projects on the Washington Street corridor, overall construction impacts, long-term impacts. Uh, it was very helpful to be on here for the earlier hearing related to the, the bus lane work out to Eggleston and hearing William talk a little bit about the next steps there. Uh, but we know that generally some of those there are some of those concerns. But we've added the the bicycle racks and continue, we'll continue to work through the final tap out with uh, with William and BTD over the uh, coming weeks. Thank you, David. Uh, either David or John, if you could uh, share with us uh, the status of uh, the maintenance agreements that are needed for this work. 
Yep, so the, 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 the TAP is currently with the city. The LMI, um, our attorney reached out to Chung this week, and that is in the, begin, in the process of uh, underway. And the CMP uh, will be filed once the contractor is selected. Okay. David, to expedite things, uh, uh, we appreciate uh, a signed executed LMI before we can record these plans. So if you could help us to achieve that task, that will be truly appreciated. Uh, any comments from fellow commission members? Hearing none, uh, any comments from staff? Also, Hearing none, seeing no comments on the chat box. I'd like to hear a motion on public hearing number four. I make a motion on public hearing number four for the making of specific repairs within Washington Street as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes. Thank you. Moving on to public hearing number five on a petition by Washington Fine MN Limit LLC for the granting of an earth retention license for the installation of a temporary earth support system within Washington Street Public Way, West Roxbury, located on its southeasterly side at address number 3368, generally southwest of Glen Road. This was introduced as new business on July 23rd, 2020, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston, Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Support of Excavation, and 3368 Washington Street, Jamaica Plain, one sheet dated June 3rd, 2020. John, this is the sheet I do not have, sure. so uh, if you can't, it. perhaps Todd can pull it up. <laughs> yeah, Todd, can you give it a shot? Actually, that, can you see my screen? No, John. No. Todd, please try. We will send you a processing bill for all of this. <laughs> all right. So, thank you. Um, so, we have a supportive excavation that along Washington Street, it will project about four feet into the public way. Um, at the completion, it will be cut be to it will be cut to be six feet below the grade, um, and it's right now being coordinated with the gas company for a potential conflict. Thank you, John. Comments by fellow commission members. Hearing none. Any comments by PSC staff? All set. Hearing none. Um, there are no comments in the chat box. I'd like to hear a motion regarding public hearing number five. For public hearing number five, uh, I uh, recommend approval of a petition for the granting of an earth retention license on Washington Street as further read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to public hearing number six on a petition by Northeastern University for the making of specific repairs within Corner First Avenue for public way in Roxbury, located on its northwesterly side at the first number 815 northeast of Millennia Cass Boulevard, consisting curves, sidewalk, and roadway reconstruction, as well as new and relocated traffic islands, pedestrian brands, speciality pavement, street trees, planters landscaping borders and protected bicycle facilities. All of this was shown or introduced on, um, on new business on July 23rd, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division, specific repair plans 815 Columbus Ave, Northeastern University, EXP, Boston, three sheets dated June 2020. Good morning. Uh, this is Dan Boyd from Lega McCall representing Northeastern University. Uh, Chris Hodney will be from Niche Engineering. will be presenting the details of this specific request. Uh, this project was approved by the BPDA back in October of 2019. Um, we have found because we are adding an island in the sidewalk, we're basically taking the vocabulary of the streetscape that was already established in 805 
uh, Columbus Ave, and we are continuing it down Columbus Ave to the very end of um, where Columbus Ave intersects with Molina Cass. Um, I would state that most of the, or the road work, the islands, the pedestrian ramps are actually all covered by the mass DOT BTD uh, PIC approval, which has been done previously and is covered by their contract. Um, however, we have shown the work uh, on our drawings as well, and we are having conversations with um, Mass DOT and BTD as far as which contractor, whether it's Northeastern or whether it's Mass DOT's contractor, should do the work because it's more of a question of timing. Um, the one thing I did want to address is at the last meeting of new business presentation, we were asked by several people if there was going to be a signal across for pedestrians and bicycles across Molina Cass, sorry, the busway that comes into that intersection. That is not part of our scope, but we have verified with, with the designers for the Mass DOT project, HSH, that in fact, there will be signals at that intersection. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Chris Hodney, unless there's any other specific questions. All right, um, so this is Chris Hodney with Niche Engineering. Um, everyone can see my screen, is that correct? Yes, yes. Okay, great. Um, so I'll give a quick walkthrough of the project itself. So um, we've got the new Northeastern EXP building on the top of the screen here. Um, north of that is the recently constructed Northeastern ISEC building um, with the sidewalk improvements that Dan was talking about earlier that we are tying into. Um, we're really just creating an extension of the similar sidewalk language down from that to the to the work that MassDOT's doing at the intersection. Um, we have the Ruggles bus station south of the site, uh, which becomes Melnay Cass as you continue east, um, and then Columbus Ave at the bottom of the beach. So the, the work essentially is to connect the concrete sidewalk um, from the Northeastern ISEC project that was recently constructed um, across the face of our project to connect to the work being done under the MassDOT project. Um, this will be city standard concrete um, with a slight increase um, in width at the center island area. Um, and this is, um, the concrete will extend out to the curb. We'll have a, a planted island in the back with some trees and other plantings. Um, there is a permeable strip in most places along the curb um, to allow for stormwater inf infiltration uh, right along the curb. Um, behind that is a paver strip with some trees in it, generally. Um, and those trees will be red oak trees. Um, and that paver strip is separating the sidewalk from the uh, currently existing, but where it will be reconstructed, um, DCR bike path, which runs along the Southwest Corridor Park here. Uh, there is an existing um, curb cut, which comes into the site. This used to be a parking lot. Um, that curb cut is going to be just reduced in width. So it's currently 28, approximately 28 feet wide. We'll reduce that down to 20 feet. Um, and we had discussed this at the, at the previous hearing. Um, the reason for this curb cut is for infrequent deliveries um, of equipment to the, the lab space inside the building, um, right here. Um, we also have a one single um, pedestrian ramp, which is exists on the site today um, for a mid-block crossing. We are proposing to remove that. Uh, it doesn't really work from a grading standpoint with the width of the sidewalk. Um, it's also a mid-block crossing and there are other, as you can see, there's a, a crosswalk here and a crosswalk here. So we're proposing to remove that, um, which basically just means we have to do a little bit of work across the street to remove the, the reciprocal ramp. <laughs> Um, and then, as Dan said, we confirmed with the MassDOT project that there will be a pedestrian crossing signal at this intersection. Um, that's not a part of this um, approval, but it was a question that had come up at the previous hearing. Thank you, Chris. Uh, just, to, I'm sorry, uh, wasn't sure whether you were, whether you were finished with your comments. And nope, um, go ahead. So, uh, let me see. 
Okay. Uh, Dan, uh, question for you. Uh, I'm going to assume that this work, uh, right now it's not very clear to me whether the work is going to be done by your team or mass DOT, or is there a coordination issue? For example, if I take it to the worst case scenario where mass DOT is not going to do the work, I'm going to assume that you are fully prepared to do the work. Is that correct? That is correct. Our current drawings do show this, all of this work. Okay. Um, and it, there is a double coverage right now with Mass DOT, and it's going to be a discussion with Mass DOT, BTD, um, and ourselves of where to draw that line of separation to minimize the impact to the community and to also minimize putting something in place and tearing it up immediately. Um, nobody likes to see that. So we're trying to figure out exactly what that timing is and minimize the impact on the neighborhood as well. Yes. Yeah, Dan, uh, if I can say it at the highest levels, uh, if the work that is going to be done by mass DOD on your behalf, rather than carrying something twice, I think there's a logical understanding as to who should be actually putting the bill. Okay, just because mass DOD is doing the work, it may not be necessarily that it is DOD that is paying for this work. Uh, it could be the city through our non-participating agreement. So I'm sure we will do the sensible and correct thing by not wasting either one's investment being torn up, but recognizing that you were fully prepared to pay for all of these improvements, and we will just make sure that the instrument through which it gets done is not going to get torn up twice. So that would be my first thought, and I would assume you share that thought. Is that correct, Mr. Boyd? That is correct. Perfect. Second question. Uh, is there a maintenance agreement for all these wonderful uh, amenities which is being proposed here? What might be the status of that LNI? There's a draft maintenance agreement um, that is being reviewed by Northeastern Legal right now, and it will be, we will reach it and get it in place shortly, an LMI. Thank you, Mr. Boy. I appreciate those uh, words of uh, thoughts. Uh, that being said, are there any uh, questions or comments by fellow commission members? Hearing none, any comments by PIC staff? No. All set. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, at this point, I don't see any comments in the chat box. I'd like to hear a motion regarding public hearing number six. Regarding public hearing number six, I make a motion to approve a petition by Northeastern University for specific repairs on Columbus Avenue as more particularly read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion Aye. passed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Moving on to public hearing number seven on a petition by Charles River Park B company for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to the following public ways in Boston proper. Lomancy Way on its southwesterly side at address number 35 southeast of Martha Road slash Nashua Street. Martha Road on its southwesterly side northeast of Lomancy Way, Nashua Street. Uh, it was introduced on a new business on July 23rd. 2020 as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Pedestrian Eastman, Lomancy Way, and Martha Road, Boston, one sheet dated June 2020. Yes, thank you, members of the commission. Uh, my name is Dan Abood. I am with Equity Residential, uh, representing uh, Charles River Park B Company. And we'd actually like to ask today to um, provide a continuance to the next hearing as we work through some final coordination items uh, with the city agencies. Uh, we appreciate the feedback we've been provided thus far and um, a few final items to, to coordinate. So, um, then I believe the hearing is uh, in two weeks from now, which would put into September 3rd. Uh, Todd, if you could confirm that for me. Yes, that's correct. Next hearing on September 3rd. September 3rd. Uh, You're up. Any comments by commission members? Uh, assuming none, I'd like to hear a motion to continue public hearing number seven for two weeks. 
I make a motion to continue public hearing seven uh, pedestrian easement uh, within Lomancy Way and Martha Road as read into the record by the chair for the next PIC meeting on September 3rd. Second. On in favor? Aye. Aye. Process. Thank you. Next Thank item. You. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, public hearing number eight. On a petition by Charles Sugar Park B Company for making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper, consisting of curb realignment, roadway and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, specialty pavement, street lighting infrastructure, street trees, planters, landscaping, straw drain infrastructure, street furniture, bike racks, driveway curb cars, and the removal of traffic islands. Lomancy Bay, generally at address number 35, southeast of Martha Road, Metro Street, Martha Road on its southwesterly side, north west of Nomancy Bay slash Nashua Street, Toro Park, generally north of Million Cardinal O'Connor Bay. This was introduced under the new business on July 23rd, 2020, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan, Nomancy Bay Garden Garage, Nomancy Bay Improvements, West State, two sheets dated June 12th, 2020. 2020, as well as City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plans, Thorough Path, West End, two sheets dated June 2020. Petitioners. Uh, Dan may have signed off after the last action. I think it's safe to say that he would request to continue this action to September 3rd as well, though. Yeah, this is Chris Adney with Engineering. We're, we're working on the project with Equity Residential. Um, so on behalf of them, we'd like to request to continue this to the next hearing. Thank you, Chris, for mailing the petition. Uh, that being said, uh, if there are no questions by our fellow commission members, if I can hear a motion to continue public hearing eight as public hearing number seven for two weeks that would make it September 3rd. I make a motion to continue a petition uh, under public hearing agenda item eight uh, for specific repairs in the general area of Martha Road as further read into the record by the chair and to continue this matter to September 3rd. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Aye. Thanks, Aye. 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 Sorry. Aye. Public Aye. hearing number Parham. Sorry. Just wanted to uh, welcome Chief Osgood back to uh, the hearing. Chief, thank you. Uh, good to be back. Uh, Parham, why don't you continue with the remainder of the public hearing items and I will pick up with new business. Thank you, sir. Public hearing number nine on a petition of four Payne Street LLC for the making of specific repairs within Houghton Street Public Way Dorchester located on its north easterly side at Payne Street consisting of sidewalks and curb cut reconstruction, all shown on a introduced under new business on July 23rd, 2020, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan, Houghton Street, 406 Payne Street, Dodge is the one sheet dated June 25th, 2020. Uh, Chief Osgood, members of the commission, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to return and present today. Uh, this is an application for specific repair on Houghton Street in Dorchester, uh, consisting of removal of approximately six feet of curbing to increase the width of an existing uh, curb cut, which allows access to Payne Street, uh, a private way. Uh, Boston Fire Department and the Inspectional Services Department have requested uh, I enlarge this curb cut so as to improve the turn radius uh, and access for fire trucks and other emergency service vehicles, uh, which may need to access the private way. Uh, thank you for your consideration, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mark. Any questions by fellow commission members? Hearing none, any comments or questions by PIC staff? We're all set on this. Okay. Hearing none and seeing no comments on the chat box, uh, I'd like to hear a motion regarding the public hearing number nine. I make a motion um, to approve public hearing number nine for the making of specific repairs within Houghton Street as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Moving on to public hearing number 10 on a petition by CKG Congress LLC 
for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to Columbus Air Public Way Boston proper located on its southeasterly side at address number 566 between Mass Ave and West Springfield Street. Introduced on the new business on July 23, 2020, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Pedestrian Eastman Plan 566 Columbus Ave, also known as 450 Mass Ave, Boston South End, one sheet dated June 15, 2020. Mr. Garland. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Jonathan, go ahead, we can okay. hear you. Thank you. Uh, uh, good afternoon, Chief Osgood, members of the commission. My name is Jonathan Garland with J. Garland Enterprises Architecture and Design, and I'm joined by uh, members of the development team, Mark Savatsky with New Boston Ventures, uh, Steve Sawyer of DCI is a civil engineer, Nick Healy and John Amadeo with IBI Placemaking or the Landscape Architect, and Guy Busa and Ian McKinnon with Howard Stein Hudson. And we're here to talk about uh, 566 Columbus Avenue uh, in the South End, also known as 450 Mass Ave. Uh, the last time we were before the commission, there was a request to start with some project renderings uh, to give a sense of the overall uh, totality of the project and the comprehensive vision. Um, so here you can see that we're proposing uh, a six-story uh, residential home ownership building uh, with 66 units of housing um, supported on a ground level of active commercial nonprofit uh, community space, uh, residential lobby, and a cafe at the corner of Mass and Columbus. So this is that vantage point, and you can see that we're proposing five new street trees along uh, Columbus Ave and uh, three new street trees along Mass Ave in this particular view. Uh, this other angle is from Massachusetts Avenue, um, uh, looking at the building and how it abuts the existing brown zones at 460 Mass Ave. Uh, right in the foreground, you can see our garage entrance with a uh, curb cut uh, that we're proposing. Steve uh, will talk about that in more detail as we're uh, looking to neck down uh, substantially the existing much wider curb cut that goes into a parking lot that exists in that location today. Uh, this is a view from uh, the corner of Columbus and West Springfield, uh, where you can see that we're proposing four additional new street trees on West Springfield uh, going down as we abut the uh, existing residences on West Springfield. Um, I will also, just to step back, mention that you can also see the location of the proposed new blue bike uh, right at the intersection of West Springfield and Columbus. Uh, and Steve has more details on that. And then lastly, this is a view uh, looking down West Springfield uh, back toward Columbus Avenue, uh, seeing how the building sets into the rest of the neighborhood. Uh, just as far as the comprehensive site plan, uh, we have reviewed this streetscape plan with landmarks and received our approval through landmarks on July 30th. Uh, and we have a letter uh, as part of this record, which is in this package here. But at this time, I'll turn it over to Steve Sawyer, which will talk about these uh, specific repairs. And Steve, when you're complete, if you can hand the baton to uh, John Amadeo and Nick Healy of IBI Place Making. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yeah, Steve, Steve Sawyer, with the design consultancy. I guess one item of, um, I guess, of, I guess this hearing is for the easement. Uh, the easement should be, should we jump to the easement plan and discuss that, or should I jump into the specific repairs? We have four items as part of this project. So, up to you. I can go to the easement plan. First item. Sorry. First item. Sorry. First item. If you pick those plans and speak to it. I'm sorry, okay. Um, so as far as uh, part of the widening of the, the sidewalk on Columbus Ave, we're, grant, we're granting easement uh, for, project for pedestrian access and uh, access to the public realm. We basically just providing that easement, there's meets and bounds uh, to accommodate the widening of the provider eight foot 
or greater uh, pedestrian pedestrian uh, way on uh, pedestrian passage on uh, Columbus Ave. So that's that's basically it for the for the for the easement plan. Thank you, Stephen. Um, comments by commission members. Yeah. Um, hi, Stephen, Jonathan, and team. Uh, thank you for sending me those updated plans yesterday. Um, so, and just with the with, uh, the pedestrian easement, um, you know, I went into the the store um, that we own in the building on the next petition. Uh, but just the general comment is that we do have an existing store where you have the pedestrian easement, so uh, we do have the right to be there at any time if something's needed. It's just an FYI on on this petition. Denise, would it be to your life to keep that statement is incorporated into an LNR, the license maintenance agreement? Um, I'm sorry, Tara? Would it be useful if, you, if we include that requirement into the LNI, I'm sure there's going to be a maintenance agreement. Okay. That way it won't be lost in the translation. Okay, thank you, Tara. Awesome. Uh, any other comments by table commission members? Hearing none, uh, any comments by PSC staff? We're all set on this one. Hearing none and seeing no comments on the chat box, I'd like to get a motion regarding public hearing number 10. I make a motion to approve a petition by CKG Columbus LLC for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to Columbus Ave as further read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Open process. Next item, public hearing number 10, on a petition by CKG Columbus Ave LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public way in Boston proper consistent of consisting of curb alignment, sorry, realignment sidewalk and pedestrian ramp reconstruction as well as new and relocated specialty pavement, street lights, street trees, irrigation substructure, strong drain infrastructure, bike racks and driveway curb cars. Columbus Ave on its southeasterly side to address number 566 between Mans Ave and West Springs, Springfield Street. Massachusetts Ave on its northeasterly side to address number 415 southeast of Columbus Ave. West Springfield Street on its southwesterly side, southeast of Columbus Air. It was introduced under new business on July 23rd, 2020, at the set of plans and title city of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division specific to the 566 Columbus Air, also known as 450 Mass Air, Boston South End, two sheets dated August 17th, 2020. Hello, uh, Steve Sorrell from Design Consulting. Um, I'll just uh, work through. Jonathan went over the, the overview of the uh, of the improvements in the public public realm. I'll just I'm going to work clockwise around from the, the lower corner along the Ave. As mentioned, we're we're narrowing up, cleaning up that uh, curb cut into the parking garage. Uh, so the garage door, a 14 foot. Uh, it'll be a 14 foot curb cut. Uh, as far as the the material will be a drivable brick on, on the pedestrian portion with a concrete apron uh, to mount up onto the brick surface. As we work up along Mass Ave, we're providing two new street trees. An important item about the improvement of these trees is, is there'll be structural soil uh, as part of the improvement to enhance the, provide enhanced growth of the trees along with irrigation. Um, the street lamps on this on this uh, portion will not be uh, don't be relocated. They can be refurbished as required. Uh, uh, the luminaires and stuff uh, we're providing three new bike racks uh, along uh, this portion. The there'll be uh, actually the sidewalk will be opened up as part of the bus stop consolidation. The bus stop at this location is going to be removed to open up the sidewalk along Mass Ave. There is a uh, recycling and trash bin as we work to the corner, that's to remain in place. Uh, the sidewalk, the pedestrian ramps in this location, they're all compliant, the reciprocals are compliant. compliant. This ramp is compliant, but to be uh, recently redone. Uh, it would probably be damaged during construction, it would be uh, replaced, uh, it would be uh, reconstructed in place uh, at that area exact location. 
uh, one item that came out of the comments from disabilities and also in the police department, uh, public parts, was the light, the uh, control cabinet, the lighting cabinet is in the pedestrian way. What we've done is we've pulled that out into the furnishing zone uh, to fully clear out that area. Uh, we have a six, I think a six and a half foot furnishing zone with firmly open pavement. Uh, going actually going back to Mass Ave, there's a five, I believe, a five foot furnishing zone with firmly open pavement along Mass Ave. So we're providing firm, uh, furnishing uh, furnishing zones around the entire perimeter. Uh, along this area, we are infilling. Uh, we're we're actually uh, straightening out the curb line, removing the inlay with the parking spaces, so we're straightening that curb line out. Will be four new, four new uh, bike racks uh, for public use at this, area, at this location. The bike lane, there is a bike lane along Columbus Ave. Uh, we'd be continuing the striping through the where it was dis, there was a uh, it was discontinued or it was, it was uh, discontinued at the parking location. We uh, complete that bike lane uh, along the entire frontage along Columbus Ave. As we work down, uh, there will be a light pole that needs to be slightly shifted, uh, moved a couple feet to center it between the two new trees. We're providing five new trees along Columbus Ave. Uh, and then I believe it's a blue bike station. I believe it's 15 bikes. Uh, I think it's 15 bikes. Originally, we had three separate uh, three pods that was bifurcated, and we're providing, we removed three of the bikes and to consolidate it. Uh, so we just. Uh, 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 as part of the comments at the previous uh, meeting. So we've uh, addressed that with the blue bike uh, there. Now, if we work around the corner to West Springfield, uh, that ramp was non-compliant, a non-compliant ramp. So what we are doing here is we're gonna provide no ramps, uh, directional ramp across West Springfield, and then a directional ramp across Columbus. Now the ramp, a reciprocating ramp on the opposite side of Columbus is compliant, so there's no work planned at that corner. The reciprocating ramp at Cross West Springfield is non compliant, so we'll be constructing at that corner two directional ramps at, at that corner. Uh, so there'll be advanced uh, handicap accessibility at, at, at that location. As we work our way around and down West Springfield, uh, we're providing four new street trees, uh, a furnishing zone, along with a brick sidewalk. All the trees, all the street trees, will construct by soil and irrigation to, to promote the growth and health of the new street trees at this location. Um, I think one of the one of the items that was brought up uh, regarding Columbus Ave was this desire of disabilities. I believe Public Works for eight foot clear concrete sidewalk travel path. Um, we're, I wasn't actually, Jonathan was at the Landmarks, I believe, and yep. Landmarks is approved brick at this location, uh, I guess with the historic nature of this uh, this area. So I guess that's a, a discussion that I imagine is gonna be brought up regarding this application uh, today. I think that, that covers the improvements around. I guess one item on this was we will be moving to the street lamps at the corner of West Springfield. We have to slide them a couple feet to uh, complete our pedestrian ramp work. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, as you know, the ongoing balance between historic preservation and Mount Cabot and ADA, I believe we have to uh, actually provide uh, the, the comments to uh, do any fellow commission members have any comments? Um, yes, I have a few comments. Um, so in regards to the um, the sewer that's going through the proposed building and the proposed work on this uh, position. Um, so as of today, we hadn't received a design on how uh, it will be accomplished. Um, what I was told is that um, wanted to um, abandon the sewer where it runs under the building. Um, we don't know at this time, we have, I guess that we have the uh, design, so we don't know if it's going to be feasible. So um, until um, a plan is provided for comment review, um, 
PWS three will instead the pipeline will be operational through the new building within the existing easement and do rehab the rebate if the board was expensive if necessary. Thank you, Brady. Yeah, actually, we had, um, I believe we had resubmitted planning for actually we're planning to maintain, provide a new pipe underneath the building. Um, I, I can check the film and see how it's coming along. Uh, but there isn't, our intent is to provide uh, provide a new pipe through the garage along with a, a plate, removable plate, uh, for access to the pipe if needed for maintenance. Uh, and we're working through that detail with. Um, Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and then there was just a couple other uh, minor comments. So on the uh, Mass Ave side, you have uh, the first three, so um, I'm not sure where the north arrow is. It's the first, the first thing when you come around the corner, um, it looks like it's a little close to the cat basin. I don't know if we can just move it um, away from it a little bit. We're concerned about tree root near the cat basin. Did you say on the Mass Ave side? I'm, I'm not. Oh yes, on the Mass Ave oh, yeah. side. Yes, yeah, so that one right yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, I see the close three. Uh, Stephen, we lost you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so it's it's the closest to the yeah. intersection that. Basin at that location. Did he swim? You, you asking to move the tree or the catch basin? Oh, the, the tree. If you, I don't know if you can move it, you know, a little bit away from the catch basin. It, um, it looks like it's too close. Uh, we're just concerned about tree yeah. root near the catch basin. Okay. Yeah, and then um, just one other minor comment. Um, there's a couple of the catch basins that are within the, um, you know, the exi your existing work. Uh, you know, if there's net amounts. Um, on the catch basin, uh, that's great. If there are any or if they're broken, we need to make sure that we have there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, at this point, I want to recognize your service. Uh, Mary, if you would like to share your thought. Hi, thanks. Um, Mary Service, City of Boston, uh, Landmarks Commission staff. Um, I just wanted to point out uh, that the South End Landmark District Commission is particularly concerned about the material of the sidewalks. Um, it was approved at it was approved as a brick sidewalk, a full brick sidewalk at the um, July 30th special hearing. Um, so any changes that come about will need to be re-reviewed by landmarks. Um, the brick here is appropriate because the existing sidewalk that is within the public realm is brick. Uh, the concrete sections are located on private property. Um, our guidelines are pretty specific that brick needs to be replaced brick. and this brick material is one of the characteristics of the district and this material helps reinforce that so I will note that um, there is existing concrete along um, Columbus Avenue with a strip of brick um, just running the line of the street. However, directly across the street on Columbus Avenue, there is also a full brick sidewalk. So there is definitely um, a, a precedent for that here. Um, so I just wanted to add that and let you know that the Landmarks Commission is um, very concerned with this brick material and requests that the sidewalk be brick. Thank you, Ms. Servers. Just a point of uh, order here. Uh, we have a person who is calling in with the phone number, last two digits, one zero, first three digits are 857. Uh, we are getting feedback from your phone online uh, if you could be ever so kind and move that number move your phone that is 857 last two numbers one zero because we are giving feedback from there thank you so much uh, at this point i would like to recognize sarah from our disabilities commission no or either uh, either sarah or miss mendez Patricia or Sarah? I'm sorry, what was the question? No, we are trying to 
uh, get comments from one of our fellow team members okay. from the Disabilities Commission. Thank you. I apologize, it looks like um, Patricia dropped off the call, um, so I'll take it over for her. Um, so we also wanted to express um, our concern regarding um, the material for this sidewalk. Um, we do recognize that the existing sidewalk is, um, or the existing um, concrete is on private property. However, um, it is our view that it still functions um, as a public sidewalk. Um, so. We do want to see a continuation of the um, concrete um, as it passes through the site. We also wanted to note that on either um, side of this block exists a concrete path of travel. Um, so um, to us, it also makes sense that, um, that the line of concrete um, continues through this block um, and per um, the City of Boston's reconstruction policy, um, it does note that if there is concrete, um, that it sh um, should be replaced um, in concrete. Thank you. Uh, Stephen, uh, Mr. Sawyer, uh, it is the policy of the city, PIC, where matters of this nature, we obviously prefer to have these matters resolved in totality before coming under new business seems like there seems to be a difference of thought between two city agencies and uh, at this point uh, mr garland do you want to add any thought patterns i i would like to add thank you for offering um just to point out and i think john amadeo if you're on the line it would be helpful to hear from you on this uh, because our understanding is that if you have brick in the public way that you are required to replace that in kind with brick and so very clearly in this diagram you can see the existing condition uh the diagram on the on the right which shows the site plan uh that yellow line that's overlaid on the black dash represents the property boundary so everything north of that is in the public right of way which we overlaid onto this photograph so that you can see where that line falls so what's going on is that there's a fair amount of space out in front of the existing building that, uh, that has a, a balance of sort of concrete and brick, uh, sort of halfway in the middle, which is entirely on private property. And then all of the brick is in the public right of way. So our approach to uh, preserving the brick is sort of twofold. One is that it, it really responds in respect to the South End Historic District uh, which is separate from just, I think, a standard project in the city of Boston relative to the district standards. And then secondly, it responds to uh, the fact that we are looking to replace brick with brick. And so this is one shot of Columbus. Here's another shot closer to the corner of Mass and Columbus, where again, you can see the property line and all of the brick on the public right of way. And, uh, and then here's a shot at the edge of Columbus and West Springfield where you can see, again, the full public right-of-way portion is of the sidewalk itself is all brick. So we're looking to replace that uh, in kind with brick. Mr. Garland, the way I see it, uh, this issue is between two city agencies, uh, matters of this nature. Uh, it is not the desire of the commission, of the Public Improvement Commission, to have those matters be adjudicated or resolved between two city agencies through the commission. That is not our desire. Normally we try and figure out to ease out issues between city agencies and the petitioner. So I'm a little bit concerned about how this project was brought under new business to the commission, recognizing that there seems to be two different thought patterns between two city agencies. Uh, because I, okay. I'm not in favor of using the commission as the means at a commission hearing as the means to resolve uh, competing thought patterns that should be done before it comes uh, under new business. Because it seems to be that our, our disabilities commission and our preservation commission uh, may be having uh, competing thoughts over here. Understood. 
and can I, if I can just ask a follow-up question for clarity, um, whose who's ultimate purview is it in um, relative to the different commissions to uh, render a final decision on the materiality? It is uh, always a balancing act, and there's a joint conversation between those two departments. There are two separate city departments, and I don't think I want to say who overrides one. I think there are city policies, or there may be active city policies of past practices as to how to manage the situation. So, but it is absolutely not a forum, to the best of my knowledge, with uh, be part of this commission for a quarter of a century. But this is not the forum through which we resolve these issues. Okay, so, thank so, you. So th this issue is absolutely an internal one, um, and I think we can have this conversation offline between uh, PIC staff, uh, the Landmarks Commission, and the Disabilities Commission. And I think we it should be up to us to come to um, an understanding internally, uh, and then we will uh, give direction to the project team as to what this material should be looking like. That would be a very sensible uh, step forward. Uh, I appreciate that guidance. Plus, I believe, uh, based on the comments uh, received or uh, mentioned by the uh, board, and so there are adjustments that needs to be made. Basically, what I'm looking at is uh, the need for a continuance until this matter gets sorted out. Uh, Todd, what are your thoughts on that? Mr. Limey, sorry. I was muted. Uh, the, if the project team would like to request uh, continuance, that, that would be fine. Um, yeah, it, that's it's up to them, really. Yeah. Yeah. And the pro yeah. Uh, so it, it would either, yeah, we, I guess we'd have to ask to continue unless it would just be a condition of the PIC approval that that we are to resolve um, resolve the resolve the bridge. The, the surface type between uh, the competing agencies is a part of the. I don't know if you can condition the approval that way. Yeah, if, if, that, if that's that possible, man. I would. If I'm that's sorry, possible, I would be in favor of that as well. If the commission is able to um, approve with with that provision that we solve it internally with the um, landmarks and disabilities commission in terms of materiality. With Mr. Garland, my only concern about. With your provisional improve, uh, because the plans need to change, right? The plans that are being submitted in front of PIC do not account for the differences in this conversation, plus the comments that were raised by the supervision. So it is needed where you are amending the plans. Now, is there any other reason why you would want us to pass judgment or make a petition board, or is there? Absolutely possible for you to wait for two weeks until uh, this matter gets resolved to your team and the city team. I'm sorry, I have to admit I, I didn't I didn't catch all that. Did you catch that, Steve? Yeah, part of that makes it yeah, you said it's only yeah, a couple of weeks out. Yeah, we there's no reason. There are some additional changes regarding moving a tree moving some trees and some moving a tree and, and such. So yes, we can uh, yeah, we, yeah. Work that out unless yeah. we can work it out over the next week and then try and close this out uh, at the next meeting. What is it, two weeks? Wonderful. Uh, any uh, further comments by either committee members? Any comments by uh, PIC staff? We're all set, other than that. Oh, okay, uh, and in the comment box, I'm not seeing any further comments by our sister agencies or our fellow agencies. So at this point, I'd like to hear a motion regarding uh, the hearing number 11. I, I make a motion on the uh, petition by CKG Columbus LLC for specific repairs in the area of uh, Columbus Ave. Is uh, read into the record by the chair for this matter to be continued until the next pick hearing on September 3rd. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And passes to continue the public hearing to September 3rd. 
Next item on the agenda, public hearing number 12, on a petition by CKG Columbus LLC for the granting of a project, sorry, a projection license for the installation of a canopy over a portion of the sidewalk within Mass Air Public Way Boston proper, located at the easterly corner of its intersection with Columbus Air. This was introduced under new business on July 23rd, 2020, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division, Plan 566 Columbus Air, also known as 450 Mass Air, Boston South End, one sheet dated June 15, 2020. Hello, uh, Steve Sawyer with Design Consultancy. Um, so the, the vertical projection license, it's a, just a very small area at the corner of Columbus in Massachusetts Ave. Uh, there's a small bump out canopy uh, on this building. As you can see, it's just a, a very small area up in, the, up in that corner. Uh, I believe it's, I can't quite see if we can zoom in a bit. I think it's uh, 11 and a half feet clear to the curb line in Mass Ave and a little over 15 feet clear to the curb line on Columbus Ave and it's only 15 square feet. Uh, actually, Jonathan, maybe you can, there's that view you had looking at the corner from, uh, looking at that corner in the presentation, in the rendering, you can kind of get a, a better feel for what it, what it actually looks like. Yeah. I think it'd be a good, as, oh, there we go. So just as you can see, right it's here. right there, that, that small, that small corner there. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the vertical projection for this project. All right. Thank you, Steve and, and Mr. Garland. Thank you. Uh, comment Thank you. by commission members. Hearing none, comments by the uh, I just would appreciate the project team noting the vertical clearance. Uh, vertical clearance. Uh, Jonathan can zoom into that canopy yeah. detail. Trying to see here. Yeah, there we go. So you have uh, uh, 11 feet? Yeah, 11 feet. Actually, it's called out if we if you pan oh. up just a bit. There we go. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so you got a floor of, you got a floor of uh, 20, actually the sidewalks at 18.8 and a bottom canopy of 29, so it's almost towards 11.8 feet, or 11.2 feet, is your vertical clearance. 10 point. Thank you. Peak. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Uh, any further comments? Seeing or hearing none, I'd like to hear a motion on public hearing number 12. I make a motion on, uh, to approve a petition by CKG Columbus LLC for the granting of a projection license to install a canopy and a portion of a, a mass ab as further read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next item on the agenda, public hearing number 13. On a petition by CKG Columbus LLC for the granting of an earth retention system for the installation of a temporary earth support system within the following public ways in Boston proper. Columbus Air on its southeasterly side at address number 566 between Mass Air and West Spring Springfield Street. Massachusetts Air on its northeasterly side at address number 450, southwest of Columbus Air. West Springfield Street on its southwesterly side, southeast of Columbus Air. This was introduced under new business on July 23rd, 2020, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Conceptual Temporary Excavation Support Plan 450 Mass at Boston, three sheets dated June 2020. Steve Sawyer from Design Consultancy again. Uh, so yeah, so we're, it's a soldier pile and lagging support system for the excavation of the, uh, the new basement area. So along Mass Ave, it pretty much, it just creeps in by a foot or so into the Mass Ave uh, right away. There is a little notch you'll see at that corner uh, that uh, creeps in uh, more than that, probably about 
three or four feet, four feet into the into the way at that that corner. Then we run just just off uh, once again about a foot or two into the public realm along Columbus Ave, and it rolls out a bit as we roll around. We end up two or three feet into the public realm along West Springfield via soldier pile lagging system. The soldier piles, I my understanding, will be cut uh, cut off six feet below grade, uh, and uh, in the surface restored. Stephen, as this is the public hearing, do you have a plan sheet that shows the site profile of the entire off? Yes. Uh, I will next. Please. Thank you. Yeah. Let me just. So this sheet, this sheet as well as this one, is West Springfield. These two are Mass Ave and Columbus. Yeah, I don't know if they had did that, did they actually show the actual cutoff elevation on it. I, so either you need to show that elevation or have it as a note on the PIC plans. Okay. okay. And add it, we'll add it as a note to the uh, note add it as a note to the PIC plans. Thank you, Mr. Sawyer. Right. Any comments by commission members? Oh yes, um, I just um, like to make a comment about um, you know the the uh, the sewer pipe again. Um, we just need to. Uh, as to see um, where it's crossing the sewer, and, you know, in the building. Just if you can just show a section of that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Laura, I'll just note that the cutoff depth is uh, noted on sheet one. Okay. No right. number three on the bottom left hand corner. Yeah, talk to Columbus and Dennis, Dennis's comments. Dennis, did you want those comments to be shown on the plans, or did you want them to show it to you now? Oh, um, they can, you know, on the on the plans is fine. Okay, all right. So, Mr. Saw, you have a little bit of homework to do, uh, and resubmit these plans for for completeness purposes. So if I understand correctly that the, the cutoff, the cutoff information is adequate as shown in the notes below, but now we just need to do a section uh, showing the existing pipe through the site. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank okay. you. Any further comments by commission members? Hearing none, comments by Mr. Clark. Hearing none or seeing no comments by the chat box, I'd like to get a motion regarding item number 13, public hearing number 13. I make a motion to approve a petition by CKG Columbus LLC for the granting of an earth retention license in the area of Columbus Ave, Mass Ave, and West Springfield Street as further read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Garland, Mr. Sawyer. See you in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to public hearing number 14 on a petition by Tom Castle for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to, the, to install new telecommunications conduit, conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in Charlestown. Solis Street from Warren Street to rear of 34 Winthrop Street, Warren Street, and Solis Street. This was introduced under new business July 23rd, 2020, as shown on a set of plans in the City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grand Location 34 Winthrop Street, Solis Street, Boston, Charlestown, one street dated May 2020. Uh, good morning. Um, this is Herb Bertoni from Crown Castle. Um, we can everybody see my my screen, my plan? Yes, we can. You're good. Yeah, I can see, it, but I guess you can. Okay. Um, we are petitioning for the grant of location with a lead company status and no participants on Soli Street and Warren Street in Charlestown. Uh, the job is for placing conduit to provide a new service to 3401 Street. Uh, the dig is 286 feet of conventional orange conduit and also includes city shadow conduit. And up for questions. 
questions by commission members? Hearing none, any comments or questions by PIC staff? Awesome. Hearing none, comments by the audience? Seeing none, I'd like to hear a motion regarding public hearing number 14. I make a motion to approve a petition by Crown Castle for a grant of location with lead company status uh, for telecommunication conduit in the area of Soli Street and Warren Street as further read to the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next item on the agenda, public hearing number 15 on a petition by Crown Castle for grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduits within with Smith City Shadow within Tremont Street, Public Way, Boston Proper, located generally at address number 611 between Aquarilla Street, West Canton Street, and Dartmouth Street, West Dedham Street. Introduced under new business on July 23, 2020, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Ground of Location 611 Tremont Street, Boston, one sheet dated November 25, 2000. Okay, I'm not sure whether that's a typo 2000 and that should be 2020. No, I think that's a 2019 can't be 2020. Go ahead, sir. Eating that into the right note. Um, we have a petitioning for a grant of location with lead company status, no participants on Tremont Street in the south end between Aguadilla and Dartmouth Street. Uh, the job is for um, placing conduit to provide a new service uh, to 611 Tremont Street. It's uh, big as 325 feet of conventional four inch conduit and also includes city shadow conduit. And up for questions. Thank you. Uh, questions by fellow commission members? Hearing none, questions by PIC staff? Hearing none, comments by chat box? None. Uh, sir, when are you planning on doing this work? Because the city has a roadway project to, to improve Tremont Street. I think in this area, I'm going to assume you are That's going to jump on this as soon as possible. Awesome. Uh, that being said, I'd like to hear a motion regarding public hearing number 15. I make a motion to approve a petition by Crown Castle for a grant of location uh, uh, with lead company status for a new telecommunications conduit on Tremont Street in Boston as further read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. That concludes the public hearing section of today's agenda. We can move to the new business, uh, Chief. Uh, All right. Yep. Awesome. Uh, Barra, thank you so much for your leadership of the uh, public hearing portion. Moving on, as Barra said, to the new business. Our first item is 85 Seaport Boulevard, South Boston, specific repairs on a joint petition by Seaport B slash C, retail owner LLC, and the Seaport Square Development Company LLC. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. My name is Jody Sanchez from Goulston and Stores. I'm here on behalf of the petitioners. I'm joined today by uh, Amy Prange of the petitioners and John Schmidt from Niche Engineering. Uh, we're here before you today for an action relating to uh, blocks BC of the Seaport Square project. Block BC is bounded by Northern Avenue and Seaport Boulevard and includes two fully constructed retail buildings. Um, in connection with the project, we are respectfully requesting approval of specific repairs to Seaport Boulevard, which John will discuss in a moment. Um, I know that this area is already, uh, the area being considered is um, already subject to a master LMI. And so this change will be memorialized in an amendment to the master LMI. Um, unless you have any questions, I'll now turn it over to, to John. Thanks so much. Go ahead, John. John, you may be muted. (laughs) 
John, if it is easier, Todd might be able to pull up the specific repair plan, and then you can talk us through it. Uh, Todd, please do. I thought I had it. I don't. <laughs> I was muted. Yep. I can't wait to see everybody. Amy, Amy, you have to send me a bill for this. Sorry. <laughs> There's not oh. been 50 clots for us, folks, right? Uh. Thank you, Abby, or Todd. So thank you, uh, thank you, Abby, Adi, thank you, Todd, um, and thank you, commissioners. So as you are aware, this section of Seaport Boulevard was constructed probably five or six years ago as part of the Seaport, uh, Seaport Square Master Sidewalk Plan. And within the last couple of years, we began, we've, begun to, we've begun to introduce plantings into the Seaport Square. Uh, the first was the, the median that was reconstructed in the last couple of years. We have a nice set of plantings down the median of Seaport Square. What we're going to do is sort of take that flavor and bring it into the frontage zone of these sidewalks. Right now, the, the frontage zone consists primarily of pervious pavers. Um, and this will, and what we want to do is add a little green, add a little life to this section. So what we've done is we've taken a, uh, 280, 282 feet of the frontage zone where we are uh, introducing uh, some planting beds with low uh, low lying plants, um, shrubs, that sort of thing, while maintaining uh, the safe pedestrian drop off at the pump outs. Uh, we reviewed this closely with Amy Cording and, and she's blessed this design. So it's, uh, and I think this, if this is successful, this is a pattern we want to introduce throughout Seaport Boulevard, so the greening of Seaport Square. Um, excavation is only 12 to 18 inches below grade, so we won't be, in, we won't be touching any existing utilities. We are using, uh, we're not changing the stormwater characteristics because the, the, the greening will allow infiltration similar to the previous pavers. Uh, we are not impeding the pedestrian access because the concrete sidewalk is remaining untouched. And we're not impacting the public way or the travel way because the curb line stays where it is. So it's just a, a landscaping improvement to help green uh, Seaport Square. Okay, thanks, John. So just for no change in curb line, no change in the sidewalk, just right. a change in essentially the furnishing zone, converting some of the previous pavement to plantings. True, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, questions or other questions or comments on this? Amy, uh, Ms. Frank, thank you for these improvements which you are, are doing and uh, increasing the visual visibility on these improvements, and we will be folding the maintenance into the master one which Ms. Corning created with you all some years back. Yes, awesome. Yes, yep. Thank you. Yep, it's really, it's a rather wide sidewalk and we've been thinking for a while about ways to make it more inviting to pedestrians. Um, so this is what we've landed on and we're really excited about it. We hope to be able to construct the improvements this fall before the winter. So that's we get approval, of course. Okay. Other questions or comments? Todd or Abby? We're all set. Members of the public? I see none. Good. Okay. Uh, we will see you guys in two weeks if that works for you on September 3rd. Excellent. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Of course. Um, moving on to our second item of new business 95 North Harvard Street, Brighton, specific repairs on a person by the president and fellows of Harvard College. Good morning, board members. It's Mark Handley from Harvard University. Can you guys hear me? We can, Mark. Thank you, Chief Osgood. Uh, I'm here today with a team. Um, we're discussing a signage installation on North Harvard Street on the south side of the street. Um, Chris Grimley is here from Over Under. Elizabeth Randall is here from Reed Hildebrand. My colleague, Gary Hammer, is here from the Harvard Planning Office. We are um, discussing today one sign in a network of signage that's being installed across Cambridge and Alston, almost two dozen signs altogether. Um, the one sign and only this one sign in this location um, requires a PIC interaction. It is just slightly onto the line. Um, our goal here is to provide these visual markers to uh, get people to and from Alston and to and from Cambridge. Of course, um, the science and engineering complex 
Opening has been delayed until January, but we are still on track to finish uh, soon. Um, so we're hoping to give you a sense of the entire network of these signs and then focus down onto the one that is approximately across the street um, from Harvard Stadium. And I'll kick it to uh, Chris. Thanks, Mark, and, and thank you, committee, for hearing us this afternoon. No, I was going to say morning, but we're, we're afternoon now. Um, yeah, as, as Mark mentioned, this is a, an ongoing project to connect the Cambridge and Alston campuses for Harvard University. Um, we are we have implemented uh, many of these signs on the on the Cambridge side, um, and as you can see on this slide, we've got three types: a a, a larger scale A, a slightly smaller B, and a, a tertiary C. Um, what we're really looking at in Alston um, is a a series of these signs that that complement the the ones that have been installed in Cambridge. Um, of all the signs that we are that we are planning on putting in here, only one. Uh, falls into public property of the city of Boston. All of the others, we've uh, done due, gil due diligence to ensure that they're on uh, the property of Harvard University. Um, the one yellow dot you see on screen here uh, is, is the critical one that we will be discussing, which sits between two signs, uh, one at the intersection of North Harvard and Charles River, the other um, at Barry's Corner. And so this one sits between those to give uh, a walking uh, a pedestrian um, reassurance that they're they're going in the right way. Uh, so if we go to the next slide, Chairman. So this is a view north um, towards the Charles River. You can see Harvard Stadium on the left, the business school and the, the athletic fields are on the right. Uh, the sign sits between that existing sidewalk and the fence in the hedgerow. Um, we are replacing the hedgerow with a uh, with a paving system that is used throughout the system. The paving system is, is integral and, and uh, allows people to understand that they are at a position of, of, of um, figuring out where they're at. Uh, that paving system is flush level with the sidewalk uh, and it provides a five foot turning radius at the sign itself. Um, the real issue here becomes uh, when we look at the property line. So the Harvard Stadium is to the to the north of this drawing. The fields are to the south. Um, the property line is that that red dash and that small purple square right there is is our sign um, and the and the paving. So if we look at it here, you can see again just where we're removing some hedges, we're replacing with unit pavers in the sign, um, and then finally, if we go to the next slide, we have had La Measure. Um, Structural engineering to ensure health, safety, and welfare for the, the installation of the signs. The footings have been designed. Um, and as mentioned, Reed Hildebrand are providing landscape services. Um, so that, that's really a, a quick look at it, and we'll open it up to the commission. Chris, do you mind, or Shannon, do you mind hopping back to the first image? Sure. The uh, network image? Yep. Um, and this is less of a question about sort of the, the specific action and more sort of a wondering whether on the maps there's sort of wayfinding elements that are of sort of broader relevance beyond the Harvard campus. So the Harvard Square T stop, the 66 or 86 bus stop, are those sort of things indicated on this map as well? Yes. Okay. okay. Perfect. Great. Uh, thank you for sort of adding that. It makes it sort of more broadly sort of accessible for people who are either visiting Harvard or just sort of uh, in the Austin or Cambridge area. Um, I don't have any other, any questions or comments on the, um, the specific repair plan itself? All right, Todd or Robbie? We're all set on this one. Uh, we will need a LMI agreement, uh, but we can work with the team to hash that out. Chief, the only part which I don't sorry. Please. Chief, only part which I don't remember is now uh, Norwood Medical Area in the neighborhood, lots of signs. And, and I'm saying this thing in a joking way. I don't know whether my name is on those signs. Okay? So I, I, I just don't remember whether there's a city logo on even the signs that come up in the private sector. So I just don't remember. Uh, we will uh, sort it out and tell you. Okay, PJ, sign. I think you know what I'm saying. 
This, this is uh, Brian Judge with Wilson Stores. I just wanted to, to Todd's uh, point, I just wanted to let you know, we did share a draft of the LMI with Chong last week. So we will, we will certainly finalize that with him. Great. Great. Brian, my one thought is that uh, it probably makes sense to include all of this other existing landscaping and hedges and, and, and whatnot in that maintenance agreement, only because I'm sure it's not covered today. Yeah, we can we can certainly build that in. Great, thank you. Any other uh, questions or comments, members of the public? All right, um, Mark and Brian and uh, Shannon and Chris. We'll see you guys in two weeks if that works. Sounds great. All right, great. thank you. Uh, our final item of new business. The final item of new business is 1241 Boylston Street, Ipswich Street, Boston proper, pedestrian easements, visitor repairs, direction license, temporary earth retention license on a set of petitions by 1241 Boylston LLC. Thank you, afternoon. My name is Taylor Callahan and I represent the developer OTO Development. I'm joined today by my colleagues, Dennis Mitchell and Steve Caprio, along with Josh Suarez from Niche Engineering, Gabby Wister from uh, Howard Sun Hudson and Rob Adams from Howard Sun Design. Josh will take you through the presentation and actually get that started a little bit as I'm talking. Um, but I do want to first express our gratitude to the Commission for continuing to engage on our project uh, through this challenging period. Uh, as a bit of background on OTO, we're a family owned hotel development and operating company. We've built 70, over 75 hotels uh, and deliver exceptional projects in both urban and coastal markets. We understand the importance of public space and are excited about the ability to improve on what is today a very dilapidated corner. As you are aware, the northeast corner of uh, the intersection of Boylston and Ipswich is today a Shell gas station. This site represents the entrance to the Fenway, is adjacent to a very important school and cultural institution in the Boston Arts Academy. It's proximate to the Victory Gardens and a short distance from one of the primary entrances to Fenway Park. With existing conditions including four vehicular entrances, narrow sidewalks, and a forgotten and forgotten landscaping, the site is clearly in need of improvement. The hotel will be 184 rooms and eight levels of upgrade. A roughly 4,000 uh, restaurant to be operated by a third party will also include an outdoor terrace within the property line facing oil The building is zoning compliant, and we did not have the additional density or height, although we did undergo a large project review at BPA. Through our work with RIAG, BPA, Park, BPD, BTD, excuse me, uh, PIC staff and other city agencies, we've been able to engage with many neighbor, neighborhood stakeholders. Those conversations resulted in a project that properly aligns with other Wilson Street buildings, the adjacent apartment building, and BAA, while dramatically increasing the amount of public space and improving public safety. The project will support the neighborhood by providing a parking resource for BAA staff, its relationship with the Victory Gardens, and the Fenway CDC's Walk to Work program. OTO will also operate the hotel. Uh, no secret here, but uh, as a result of the current health crisis, the travel industry faces a long recovery. However, we're fortunate through the support of our family ownership that we've been able to stay with all OTO owned properties and we will continue to reinvest in our, in our hotel. Thank you again for your time associated with the project and I'll turn it over to Josh. Thanks, Taylor. Great, good afternoon. And hopefully, I'm not sure if anyone can see me with me sharing my screen. Um, but thank you, Taylor, for the brief introduction. Um, again, this is Joshua Soares with Mitch Engineering. Um, and thank you, Chief Osgood and commissioners for hearing us today. So, you know, I'm gonna get right into the weeds of things regarding the PIC actions that we have in front of you today. Um, these include specific repairs, pedestrian easement, um, support of the excavation, and also um, projection license. So to start with the specific repairs, um, you know, starting from the north side here, coming down Ipswich Street, you'll see we are um, shifting the curb line further west into Ipswich Street, um, approximately five to six feet. Um, that is to align it with the curb line as to be constructed with the Barsonats Academy project to the north. Um, and essentially it'll act as a drop-off area um, to the hotel and also um, to the bus lane here adjacent to the Arts Academy. Um, so with that revision to the curb line, we will be reconstructing the driveway entrance to the private alley between the Arts Academy and the hotel um, with the standard approximately 20 foot wide in Boston um, commercial driveway entrance. The streetscape consists of 
um, an eight foot pedestrian concrete sidewalk in the pedestrian zone, an approximately six foot wide permeable paver strip in the furnishing zone, and then standard concrete unit pavers in the frontage zone. Um, all of this meets the cross-sectional requirements of the complete streets guidelines. With the shift in the curb line, I just wanna point out uh, more specifically to Denise that we are adding a catch basin on Ipswich Street um, because we are changing some of the drainage characteristics. We noticed when we looked at this curb line that this, this section of Ipswich Street is pretty much dead flat and this being a drop off area, we wanted to make sure that we could get that um, stormwater runoff out of there. So that's why you see that new catch basin here. Um, and additionally, while we're on that topic, we are shifting the catch basin along this curb line here at the new bump out associated with the curb revisions. So as we move down the sidewalk along Ipswich Street, we are providing new, and it's tough to see on the plan here, new street lighting um, with a total of five new street lights along the perimeter of the property. The type of street lights is currently unknown. That's to be further coordinated with the street lighting division. Whether or not those will be Cobra head style as seen on the Boylston Street corridor or more of the acorn type that's in the Fenway neighborhood, that's to be determined. Um, but portions of that lighting infrastructure adjacent to the building on Ipswich Street is actually gonna be installed um, by the Arts Academy because they have to pull power all the way down to a pull box here. So they will be providing the infrastructure and hand, pull, hand holes for the future use for our street lights. Uh, once we get to the intersection of Boylston and Ipswich Street, um, again, you'll see the bump out. Um, and there's currently two existing directional curb ramps, both of those of which will obviously be reconstructed associated with this project. We did perform an evaluation of the reciprocal ramps in and around the site. And the only ramp to be reconstructed that is not up to code is the one across the street from Ipswich Street here in front of the CVS. And continuing down Boylston Street, as far as um, sidewalk improvements, we are maintaining a minimum 10 and a half foot so concrete sidewalk here in the pedestrian zone, um, in addition to a similar strategy as on Ipswich Street with the permeable paver strip. Um, however, we are adding planter, um, planted garden beds um, within the furnishing zone. So with a total of six new trees and additional um, perennial shrubs and ground cover. Um, so uh, one thing that did come in as part of the initial comments was in regards to the limits of the concrete sidewalk in relation to um, a material change within the frontage zone and the right of way. And so we are proposing a pedestrian easement here. And I'll show you that plan shortly um, within the property line and also the limits of the concrete sidewalk, just to give the full width of the concrete pedestrian path, um, give those rights to the city. And that's also under the impression, and Guy will expand on this further, um, depending on the ultimate jurisdiction of the Boylston Street right of way. It's up in the air right now as far as if it's DCR or city owned. Um, continuing on, the street lighting infrastructure, again, pulling from that same pull box um, that has been recommended by uh, street lighting division, we are going to be pulling from that and providing new street lights and stubbing the infrastructure for um, future use at this break line with the existing sidewalk. Other curb line changes down Boylston Street include this curb line revision here to tighten the radius for traffic calming as you approach from the east on Boylston Street. And also the addition of this new curb for the DCR bikeway. Bike, bike racks and some benches are also proposed within the right of way, which have been detailed and provided in the detail sheets. And you'll also see, and which I'll show again, the outer limits of the canopy overhang. So this portion here beyond the property line. Any questions as it relates to specific repairs or anything, Guy, that you want to speak on regarding the bikeway or the jurisdictional issues? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, thank Josh. This is Guy Busso at Howard St. Hudson. Uh, so we, uh, Todd brought up um, yesterday or the day before that uh, 
in the street book, uh, it was a little unclear to him that the um, the stretch of Boylston Street was under DCR control, and we uh, we, we 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 do believe it is. Um, you know, we dealt with the BPDA on this and with BTD, and then we had a meeting with DCR um, about the um, about the uh, it, it's a raised bike facility that you see at the uh, at beyond the curb edge here. If you can sort of circle that, Josh. And uh, and no one no uh, and so I have uh, emails out to uh, Jeff Parente and um, Charlotte and Jim Fitz. And we're looking into, um, you know, the ownership of that particular facility. The street book says uh, Ipswich Street on the far end over towards Mass Ave to Ipswich Street and Park Drive down here. So we think it is. We're going to make sure it is. Um, uh, the land ownership uh, map from uh, the state shows um, that it is state property. Sorry, guys, just to confirm, Ipswich. Yeah. Uh, east of Mass Ave to Ipswich, west of Mass Ave. That the the the, the Boylston Street stretch that connects those two is DCR. Yeah. That's what we think. Correct. Right. Um, and we're just going to confirm that. Yeah, the street book listing was a little vague. Um, I've reached out to John Fleming um, of our Plans and Records Division. Great. We're doing some oh, internal good. research to find out um, where exact. We know that the DCR line is around here somewhere. We just need to figure out exactly where it is. Um, that where that falls may impact um, what of these improvements are actually approved by PIC um, and what are just kind of shown for reference. But we, we can figure that out. Right. Be too tough. Yeah, and if, if we have to bring it to PIC, we'll add it into the plans, basically. Right. Uh, the other thing uh, uh, that did come up, BTD commented on the TAPA on Monday, and they asked for a location for a bike share station. So. We're going to be looking into that. Most likely, it'll be on this Boylston Street side. So we'll see that um, for the hearing as well. That's all I have. If you have any other questions in terms of traffic. No? Uh, two uh, questions. One which, Guy, you, sort of, you touched on. I just want to make sure that it sounds like they are, but the coordinated conversations with Charlotte about the Boylston Street overall design, that those conversations are happening. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were all in the room together with that meeting with DCR. So, And then Taylor and Joshua, you both touched on this, but obviously the Boston Arts Academy project is a huge priority for the city. We just want to make sure that coordination between those two, uh, both in terms of design, but also in the construction process is uh, working well. So I, uh, if you haven't already, I'll just make some introductions for you to be able to connect with our property and construction management team around that. Yeah, and, and thanks, Chris. Um, yeah, that should be noted that the repaving of the private alley, um, pretty much all work that abuts one another, you know, the driveway entrance, um, the private alley reconstruction, that's all been actively being coordinated in the background. Um, you know, obviously, they're, they're pretty well into their construction. Um, and we've mm -hmm. been coordinating with the contractor and with also public facilities department regarding right. the back and forth. Okay. Yeah, uh, Commissioner Oscar, we also have a, an approved CMP here, and Howard St. Hudson is doing the CMP for both the Boston Arts and for this. Great. So that's been fully coordinated as well. Right. Okay, great. So um, I'll continue on in regards. I know I touched upon the pedestrian easement, um, you know, and as Todd had, had mentioned in our um, correspondence that, you know, should it be ultimately determined that this is within the a DCR right of way, we can simply just omit this easement. However, you know, here it is um, as needed. Um, so we're providing an approximate 284 square foot pedestrian easement. And again, that's just located within the limits of the new concrete sidewalk and um, the unit pavers and the property line. And as discussed in this, as going through the specific repairs, um, I did highlight the area of the canopy projection beyond the right of way. It equal, equates to about 175 square feet, and it meets all of the um, dimensional requirements with a height of 14 feet and eight inches, far exceeding the 10 feet minimum. And additionally, um, it only protrudes approximately six feet, four inches beyond the property line, well within the two thirds width requirement. Great. And um, the next plan will actually show just a quick rendering of what's envisioned for, at that vestibule. Great. 
Great. And then lastly, um, with the temporary earth retention, uh, what's proposed is um, supportive excavation along pretty much the entire length of the building on the Ipswich Street side. Um, it's important to note that the SOE will be internally braced with no tiebacks within the public right of way. And it's expected to exist within one to four feet off of the property line within the right of way. And we have Matt Farron with GEI um, consulting on the line if there's any specific questions relating to the support of excavation. Any, any questions on the uh, head easement projection license or uh, excavation plan? Todd or Abby? We're all set. Josh, anything else you want to cover on the project? Uh, no, you know, I think I think that's it. That's the four petitions. We're going to hold to them. There's some further coordination again between um, you know, BTD and ourselves um, regarding the, the TAPA, um, and we will be sure to fine tune any of that coordination ahead of the public hearing. Great, appreciate that. Um, all right, so we'll see you guys in two weeks on the third, if that works for you. Okay, great, works for us. Very good, until then. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that was our, our final item of new business. I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Make make a motion to adjourn second all in favor aye aye so moved thank you all